time to command the supernatural. Supernatural prosperity, supernatural wisdom, supernatural ministry, supernatural evangelism, supernatural business, supernatural parenting. Pray. Following online, make sure you're praying. Lord, I am ready to step into a supernatural life. The reality manifesting, commanding the supernatural. Man of God, pray. Believers, pray. Let ordinary living come to an end. Ordinary ministry come to an end. Ordinary business come to an end. Ordinary parenting come to an end. I step into the realm of miracles, signs, wonders. Results that confound principalities and powers. Supernatural music ministry. Are you praying? Don't be distracted. Pray. Supernatural results by the Spirit of the Living God. It's time to shift, to shift levels in the spirit. It's time to begin to manifest the supernatural. It's time for your life to be an epistle, a testament of God's wonder-working power.
the name of Jesus. Fire, fire, fire. Fire fall on me, fire, 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 fire fall on me, just in the day of Pentecost, fire, fire, like in the days, like in the day of Pentecost, fire, 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 In the name of Jesus, please listen to me. I'm about to pray for you, but let me tell you this. In this end time, those who will really carry the grace for signs and wonders must be people who are serious with Jesus. Very serious. Very hungry. Very passionate. More than titles more than church more than emoji more than apostle more than prophet i want to pray for you now we are here for you come and do what you do we are here for you come and do what you do set my heart on you so you do what you do we're in a mood this is a moon We are here, this is a moon. When Peter and John came to the man at Gate Beautiful, he said, silver and gold I do not have. He said, but such as I have, give I unto you. Listen to me. I don't mean to be arrogant, but let me tell you this. When it has to do with the supernatural, I know what I am saying. I have enjoyed the message of God, even on this wise. I know what a supernatural life will do to you. Your ministry, your business, your life. It is Jesus we are looking up to, but it is men that he uses. I'd like you to open your heart in the next two or three minutes. Believe with your heart. Just help those under the anointing. I have had many encounters in my life. I've only said a few of them. It is on the authority of scripture, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and the privilege of these encounters. I myself have been a recipient of the graces of those that have gone ahead. It is not everything that has come just directly by my own personal encounter. We have met many people. There are those who have gone ahead even in ministry. There are those who have demonstrated a supernatural life. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed 
that river before we are not the first you are not the first to do supernatural business john d rockefeller these are men and women who encountered grace you're not the first to do supernatural ministry oh dear scripture and history is full of men and women who shook the earth in their lifetime you're not the first to have a supernatural career ask daniel through the reign of four kings he remained on top regardless who was in power he remained on top there was a grace and they said an excellent spirit not an excellent talent an excellent spirit was at work in him you are not the first to be intellectually supported by the spirit of god there were hebrew boys who were 10 times better 10 times better let me pray for you now father let this grace come upon your people let everyone under the sound of my voice by the privilege of this grace by the miss the ministry of this angel of the lord's presence i stretch my hands in the name of jesus that everyone under the sound of my voice at the count of three may this grace come upon you may it follow you may it produce results one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that grace in business supernatural business supernatural ministry signs signs and wonders in the name of jesus let those that have heard that too i command those gates be open hither and tither in the name of jesus christ be open hither and tither in the name of jesus christ hear me in the morning in the afternoon in the evening in the night manifest the supernatural for many of you who are in ministry here i anoint you go back to your pulpits let fire begin to fall upon your altars in unusual proportions in the name of jesus christ Everything that has been happening in your life by a natural sequence we place grace upon it and we command in the name of Jesus quantum leaps geometric proportions of results where you have been praying naturally I place grace upon you may your ministry of prayer step into a supernatural dimension May your ministry of word study step into a supernatural dimension. There are many of you here, God has called you into the healing ministry. But as it is, you have not really seen that dimension, the tangibility of the healing oil. It has not come upon you. I open this jar in the realm of the spirit. And in the name of Jesus, like Samuel unto David, I place that oil upon you. Receive that grace now. Young and old, man of God, woman of God, prophet, apostle, pastor, intercessor, receive that grace. I release you into a strange healing ministry. In the name of Jesus. We have a financial series coming, but let me pray over your finances. Can I be sincere with you? There is such a thing called supernatural finances. There really is such a thing. Parasco de Shalatos Kadibande Kaprahaskia. Krakatapakarosa Sigeteperetusia. The mystery of the raven that brings bread for Elijah at Brook Cherry. 
the mystery of the five loaf and two fish that can feed five thousand there is supernatural finances in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands from today in the name of Jesus I measure a thousand cubits by grace I push you into a deeper level of supernatural finances provide value at a supernatural dimension in the name of Jesus Christ one last prayer for many of you you have been making progress but the progress is too slow relative to your destiny in the name of Jesus just help those under the anointing my goodness hear me wherever you should have been but because you did not have the supernatural advantage you have not arrived here yet i stand by the rod of the prophetic in the name of jesus between now and the end of september please hear me i stand as touching the god of my covenant go forward go forward i push you by prophecy in the name of jesus christ Help them please go forward in the name of Jesus Christ go forward go forward go forward in your career go forward in business go forward in ministry go forward can I be sincere with you? This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. One of the indices that measure fulfillment is progress. I pray for you again. Whatever has made the pace of your acceleration slow, the same grace that came upon Elijah and made him to run and overtake the chariots of Ahab, may that grace come upon you right now. we want to fight this prophecy in the name of Jesus by the privilege of God's grace he has given us the key of David the key that opens a door that no man can shut and can shut a door that no man can open we open that door and it remains open day and night we open that door it remains open day and night by the mystery of the key of David that door will never be shut day or night in the name of Jesus pray pray by your mercy oh God open our eyes we are praying already Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. It's the Lord God Almighty. It's the Lord.
Hallelujah. Listen. Please open up your spirit to these four keys that I will be sharing with you. The first key that governs the mystery of answer prayer is that before your prayer touches the throne room, it must be heartfelt. The first key to the kind of prayer and petition that will move heaven is the prayer that moves you first. Are we together? Let me assure you that God is not playing games with men. If your prayer cannot move you, it will not move heaven. Are we together? The Bible says, James chapter 5, please give us verse 15. If you can give us from Amplified, James 5, 16, we have to really be fast. There's a lot of prayer tonight. There's a lot of prayer. James 5, 16. 16 16 I like us to read it says confess to one another therefore your faults your slips and false steps and so on and so forth and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored I want us to read the B part from the NS ready one to read the earnest heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous man does what makes tremendous power available dynamic in its working the bible was teaching us how to pray the kind of prayer that will touch heaven and it's in the character of scripture to use a figure that typifies god's idea of prayer then he says elijah in this example was a man of like passion and the bible says he prayed earnestly that there be no rain for a space of three and a half years Elijah shut the heavens and put the key in his pocket he said there shall be no rain except at my word and then the Bible says when it was time for the rain to fall right Elijah began to pray he prayed the first time putting his head beneath his knees and he cried and travailed let me tell you the kind of prayer that touches heaven is the kind of prayer where you pray and forget who is by your side you're not looking at makeup or suits or conscious of whether i'm sweating no 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 it must be heartfelt from the depth of your spirit are we together hannah kept crying every time at shiloh but a time came she prayed a heartfelt prayer the bible says before the altar she poured her soul to a point that eli the prophet said why is this woman drunk how can you come to the altar drunk and he said my lord i am not drunk but a woman that is pouring her soul before god and the spirit of god spoke through the prophet let me tell you something the kind of prayer that shakes heaven is prayer that is heartfelt the way a lot of believers pray you will know that you do not expect an answer are we together yeah you pray with all your heart the bible says jesus prayed at gethsemane it was so heartfelt his sweat was like drops of blood same prayer without changing it three times and he sustained strength from heaven and was ready for the cross are we together are you ready to pray as i mentioned the king will pray and at the end of the fourth year i'll give us some prayer requests and we'll pray heartfelt prayer heartfelt prayer when we say pray you see a lot of people strolling around chewing gums huh? you see that kind of prayer let me tell you something i'm not being religious with you there is a law you are contending against forces it's like an aeroplane attempting to ride it must move and the law of aerodynamics must sustain capacity to overcome the law of gravity the flesh has its encumbrances and the moment you begin to pray the flesh will exert a weight upon you but it takes power everybody say power as you generate power in the spirit it's like a flight your flesh is weak you are feeling sleepy but you understand the law of spiritual superiority that as it is in the spirit so it will manifest your spirit is strong but the bible says the flesh is weak it's up to you to yield to the weakness of the flesh and not pray or keep praying you don't 
receive strength to continue praying it is in the prayer all of a sudden when your flesh is weak have you prayed to a point that you did not even expect you had strength for 10 minutes keep praying as you keep praying you are weak the devil keeps sending all kinds of thoughts in your mind just keep praying the secret is to continue i tell you there is an escape velocity in the spirit there is a level you will get to that it will no longer be your flesh at that level the spirit of god takes over lift your voice and pray blast in tongues a heartfelt prayer walk around don't just sit at your seat strong Oh, we are ascending, we are ascending, we are ascending in the realm of the spirit, above and beyond the realm of the limitations of the flesh. I assure you your spirit is willing. I assure you your spirit man is willing. Your spirit man is willing. Your spirit man is willing. Forget about the limitation of the flesh. With time it will bow. With time it must bow. There is a supply of grace and spirit power upon you. Grace to travail. Make it a Jesus. John 14, quickly please. 
John 14 verse 13 the name of Jesus is the access code there is no other name that can open the heavens it says and I give us in, in um, um, King James King James please it says and whatsoever ye shall ask in your name in the name of a ministry it says whatsoever ye shall ask for as long as you do it in my name it says that will i do i will supervise see to it that because my name is upon it i will make sure it is answered that the father may be glorified whatsoever you ask in my name chapter 16 verse 23 same john 16 verse 23 go ahead and read it is projected inside and outside one to read and in that day ye shall ask me nothing verily verily i say unto you uh -huh, whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name he will give it you the name of jesus is the access code are we together the attention of the father is only attracted when any man stepping in the name standing in the office and upon the strength of that which christ has done the name of jesus a representation of his finished work and his legal standing before god is the same basis we have the bible says let us therefore come before him boldly says the throne of grace boldly not in our righteousness not based on our goodness are we together but we stand upon the name the name of jesus is a representation of all that christ did the name of jesus reminds the father of the revelation of what jesus did which is a revelation of his love for man listen you will never get anything from god based on your self-righteousness it's got to be the the law of petition is that you must stand in the righteousness of Christ to be heard because the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags so we come in his name not based on our qualification are we together we are going to pray and say father I make these petitions tonight as touching your righteousness as touching your love as touching your willingness to answer me lift your voice and pray go ahead and pray go ahead and pray the name of jesus Oh, it's in the name of Jesus that we come tonight. It's in the name of Jesus that we come tonight. It's in the name of Jesus that we come tonight. It's not in the name of a man. It's not in the name of an idol. It's in the name of Jesus. Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. 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 Listen. If 
you must pray the kind of prayer that heaven will respond to then that prayer must be in accordance to the will of God now don't play with this this is where I believe a lot of people get cheated in the ministry of prayer their prayer may be heartfelt their prayer may be in the name of Jesus but it's often not in accordance to the will of God listen when you begin to make petitions in the realm of the spirit imagine yourself standing in a law court give us Isaiah 41 verse 21 listen to what the prophet teaches us about prayer Isaiah 41 verse 21 please everyone please read one to go produce your cause say the Lord bring forth your strong reasons say the king of Jacob why should the door be open to you bring forth your strong reason the prayer of lamentation only gives you a psychological consolation but I assure you it will not touch heaven challenge in your life is the accuser's voice over your destiny and if you are to speak you are standing before that court of justice your petition on what ground should I be blessed father your word says if I am willing and obedient I will eat the good of the land Lord I am willing and I've been obedient to your principles therefore I deserve to eat the good of the land I place a demand on the strength of this reality that's how to pray you don't pray emotional prayer you don't stand on stage and speak opinions and talk nonsense the only thing that challenges the voice of the accuser is the word of God which is a testament of his will show me why God must give you a child show me why God must give you a child are we together show me why God must give you a job show me why God must give you a husband because I'm beautiful it's not in the Bible are we together it's in your brain but it's not in the Bible show me why witchcraft must stop attacking my family bring forth your strong reasons let me show you one more scripture I found this today and it blessed me Isaiah 43 verse 26 learn this I'm teaching you this, the legal dimension of prayer Isaiah 43 verse 26 please read one to read put me in remembrance let us plead together declare thou on the strength of what we have discussed that he may be justified is your Bible the word put me in remembrance does not mean I have forgotten give me a basis to respond upon your life like you tell a judge in the Constitution subsection this it says this and that and the judge says this is true put me in remembrance let us preach together I'm a judge who is there to protect you but give me the basis so that I can make that decree we pray a lot of careless prayer prayer that is not word based if you are a pastor here don't allow anybody climb your mic and teach nonsense and teach opinions it must be on the basis of the word if we are praying for Nigeria what is the basis just because we want to intercede it's rubbish it looks spiritual but it will not be answered you see the difference between a shrine a herbalist and a Christian who prays are we together please take seriously it looks like a little secret but it's a powerful one when you find it something that is a basis you can hold on to it when you read Isaiah 38 the Bible talks about a man called Ezekiel I mean Hezekiah and the Bible says prophet Isaiah came and told Hezekiah pack up your things you will not recover from this sickness you will die <laughs> but Hezekiah knew 
that if you fund the project of the building of the Lord's house, the devourer should be far from you. You should live long. And Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and began to plead on the strength of his sacrifice to heaven. Have you read in your Bible the basis upon which the baptism of the Gentiles happened in the house of a man called Cornelius? He said, Cornelius, there is a reason why I'm visiting your house. Your giving, your arms, and your prayer, you have supported the cause of the kingdom. There was a woman who died in the Bible called Dorcas. When she died, there was a basis to bring her back to life. The widow said, Look, she sold clothes for us. And, and, and I don't know, was it Paul or, or, or Peter now? Peter had to say, No, 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 no. There is a basis for this woman to return back. I want to ask you a question Why do you think you should not suffer in 2016? Because I'm a Christian, you are joking. They are a kind of people that the Bible says he reproves kings for them. Are you part of it? Before you claim a blessing, find out whether you qualify for the conditions. The Bible does not talk to everybody. In the Bible, demons spoke. Donkeys spoke. Where is your rema? Where is the word that you will use as your basis? Are we together? When they stopped Daniel from praying, the scripture Pastor Alpha shared, listen, when Solomon dedicated the temple, part of the covenant he entered with God was that anyone who turned to the Jerusalem temple, let that be a basis. Lord, remember the seeds that were used to build this temple. This temple remains an altar representing the sacrifice of men. So whoever turns to it, remember men sowed their things to raise this as a memorial. And when they wanted to destroy Daniel, if Daniel prayed closing his home, he would have died for nothing. He opened the window onto Jerusalem and he started praying and when they caught him God said will I now violate my word and he sent an angel to protect them are we together don't pray serious prayer until you gather the spiritual arsenals that are responsible you've been buried you don't just stand up and say, I, I, Lord, I want a child. What is all this nonsense? That's not prayer. It's called grumbling and complaining. It's called murmuring. Read Hebrews 2, 3, 4 and see what happened to people who murmured. The earth opened and swallowed them. What is the basis? Lord, I want my church to grow. Just because you think you're a Nigerian. There must be a basis. Many Christians don't read their Bibles. They don't study the word. They don't know the provision that is made for them. Many preachers read the Bible just to preach. They read the parts that is responsible for their sermon. You must be well equipped with the word. When Satan struck, Jesus said, it is written. This is the basis. This is the basis. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word and Satan said is true. You have been attacking without scriptures. You have been attacking emotionally. Satan, get thee behind me. And he will ask why. He says, lift up your head, O ye gates. The gates replied, who is this king of glory? Why should I open up? And they said, the Lord strong and mighty. You must pray according to the word. Let me give us the last key. The Bible says to always wrap up your prayer with thanksgiving. A very simple but powerful mystery. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 to 7. It says be anxious for nothing. Right? Be anxious for nothing. But in everything he says, by prayer and supplication, then with it, thanksgiving, he says, make your request known. Make your request known. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, as you pray, not by complaining, make your request with thanksgiving. 
Jesus lifted five loaves and two fish. He didn't say, Lord, are you watching your name go down the drain? The Bible says he gave thanks. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Right? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Confidence. This is the confidence we have. The moment we ask anything in his name, he will do it. So you say, Lord, I thank you because I know that this is done. I thank you because I know this is done. And let me tell you, you want to take it to another dimension, you can pray a prayer that is just full of thanksgiving. No complaint. Lord Jesus, I thank you. The Bible says, for with joy shall you draw out of the wells. There are dimensions that salvation brings, but joy is the key. Joy is the key. That's why depression is associated with failure. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Are we together? We are going to pray. We are going to pray. Use the, the next two minutes to travel seriously. Please, I am pleading with you. Be serious. Be serious. Be serious. Don't, don't. When I say be serious, I don't mean stand up or sit down. That's not or, or shout or lie down. That's not what I'm saying. Put your heart in this thing. That's why we never give you a prayer request here without giving you a scriptural backing. That's the difference between herbal, herbal witchcraft and herbal solution and a scriptural solution. Are we together? You make petitions not according to your pain. Oh God, I've been crying till now. And God says, no, there is a system. Please hear me. Cain and Abel were brothers. They both offered sacrifices. One was accepted, one was rejected. That you are in a great house like this is no guarantee. I feel like giving you one more key. Let me share with you one more key. One mystery, listen. One mystery of answered prayer, listen please. Is praying with the consciousness of the covenant that governs the spiritual house, the spiritual tribe, and the man of God who supplies grace and faith for you. Now listen, this is very powerful. You can make petitions on the strength of the covenant God has with a man. Are we together? This is the revelation of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. What is it about them? There was a covenant. That was why God had the prayer of Ishmael. Although Ishmael was a son that came by mistake, that was not God's business. There was still a covenant connection. And when Ishmael cried, God had Abraham and remembered the covenant. Are we together? You can make petitions in heaven on the strength of access that has come when, listen, listen, the move of God on earth is through covenants. God finds a man that represents his program for a season and enters a covenant with that man and whoever associates with that man is open to that dimension God had a covenant with that man with. so you can access open heavens on the strength of the personal covenant that God had with a man or God had with a house that was Daniel's secret there was a covenant that God had with the temple in Jerusalem Elijah had a covenant with God and when Elisha knew his personal faith could not get this he said where is the Lord God of Elijah Lord I approach this thing not just on my personal faith I come based on the personal covenant that you have it's not witchcraft it can be exaggerated but when it is understood you will receive tremendous results there are people riding on the wings of the tears of people are we together when the devil afflicted Papa Oyedeko's wife demons he was casting out of some people refused to leave his wife he prayed on the strength of his secret place as an apostle and the prophet of God and that situation seemed to defy him and then they went to Papa Adeboe his spiritual father and Adeboe said Lord I have a 
a covenant with you that I will not bury any of my children. Remember that covenant. That devil gave way. At once, he gave way. Listen, there are altars that can speak for men. It's a provision in the kingdom to give you easy breakthrough. Are we together? If you do not understand this, you will die like a chicken. Not every result is on the basis of your personal faith. You can invoke covenants. And God is a God that is a covenant keeping God. There are men and women on earth on the strength of certain assignments that God gave them. There are ministries that God entered a personal covenant with them. It's a covenant of answered prayer. Let me tell you one of the covenants that is in Koinonia is a covenant of answered prayer. That's why we submit prayer requests. It's a revelation God gave me. We bring every threat before God. Every issue that is brought before God will command open heavens. That's why you find out as we pray, you begin to see manifestations. It's not just about spiritual growth. It's a covenant. It's a covenant. Let me tell you, God does not answer me ministerially just because I am anointed. There is a covenant. That's why you hear us sing that song, My altar is calling you. There is an altar. There is a secret place. One covenant we have with God in this ministry is that we will never beg for bread. Are we together? God gave me an instruction one time and I put one 1,000 naira on the ground. Plenty, up to 100,000. And the Lord said, walk on it and pray. And I walked on it and prayed through the night. It was a covenant of wealth, not personal covenant. A covenant that covered everything. That no matter what it is, God will shake the heavens and raise helpers. That's why you hear testimonies like this, our brother. It's not a result from personal faith. He's even surprised. Where will 7.5 million come? It's a power of covenant. At a point in our prayer tonight, we will pray. Not on the strength of your personal faith. Lord, remember the ministry I'm part of. Lord, remember what I'm doing. I'm showing you big keys. So you don't just pray foolishly and not get results rise up on your feet and let's pray my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling Listen, the first prayer point for time's sake, we are going to be challenging the gates of limitation in our lives. We will pray for Nigeria, but I want you to pray and challenge the gates. He said, who are that mountain before Zerubbabel? Are we together? Who are that mountain before Zerubbabel? He said, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made plain right and that will happen at the shout grace grace lift your voice and challenge every mountain in the name of jesus come on pray 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 speak to the mountain the bible says if you speak to that mountain it will give way if you speak kabatalapatia oh i speak I speak, I speak, I prophesy. In a man, I must say, and I must say, and I did, 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 and I I command limitation in my life. You must bow in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command every limitation mocking the grace of God in my life. Every limitation.
manifestation mocking the power of God in my life I challenge you in the name of Jesus I command that dragon you must bow I command that dragon you must bow I command that dragon you must bow that dragon of joblessness that dragon of poverty that dragon of stagnation oh I command you I command you in the name of the Lord God whose I am and whom I serve I command you, I command you, I command you. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says, If thou shalt say to this mountain, not any mountain, the mountain has a name, you must call it. Don't say, God bless me, God favor me. No, 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 you need to be specific. Lord, I am tired of stagnation in this area. Mention it and command what you want to do. The Bible says, declare ye that thou mayest be justified. Lift your voice and pray. Command it, call it by name, poverty, I call you by name, barrenness, I call you by name, I command you, clear up my path, limitation, I call you by name, I call you by name, I call you by name, you are a devil, I command you to give way. I tell you, mountains are moving. Mountains are moving. They must move. They must move. There is grace tonight. Challenge them. Call them by name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are we together? There is a mystery that exempts men from the plagues and the perils that come upon the earth. It is never in God's idea that you suffer what the world is suffering. Uh -uh. But there is a mystery of exemption. There are certain things that are written judgments. You cannot stop the judgment. It must come. But what happens is that there is an exemption. When the flood was about to come, it told Noah, build an ark. This flood, no one can stop it from coming. But I can exempt you. Build an ark. Are we together? Pharaoh had a dream. A famine was coming after seven years. Nothing will stop it. But there was a mystery. A strategy was revealed to, to Joseph. All through scripture, there have been famines. In Samaria, there was famine. But the prophet was not hungry. There was a mystery that sustained him. 
when it was time for breakthrough he knew what to do the bible says there was a particular location please hear me hear me you have to convince yourself that you are different don't call what they call conspiracy conspiracy the bible says when men say there is a casting down are we together we want to challenge that spirit that wants to include you in the sufferings that people are going through agree there's a lot of financial hardship agree there's a lot of downsizing but do you not know that when men say there is a casting down for you there is a lifting up you've got to believe it are we together are we together Isaiah 45 verse 1 and 3 quickly please media help us Isaiah 45 my spirit is fired up God said the Lord to his anointed Cyrus whose right hand I have holden I have to subdue nations before him what did God say he will do I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two lift gates and he says the gate shall not be shut next verse I will go before you say amen the last time God went before certain people in praise when they got there they found out the people had died when God goes before you he makes every crooked path straight he says I will go before you and make the crooked places what straight I will break in pieces come on now that's what happens when God is before you I will break in pieces it is here I will open I will break it in pieces and cut in thunder the brass of iron this is a prophecy for you now verse 3 and I will give you the treasures of darkness hold on listen there are treasures reserved for times of recession they are called treasures of darkness they are not the one you see with your physical eyes they are reserved the moment there is famine God will say come there is a brook cherry for you I can lead you to a place I'd like you to pray and say Lord I invoke the mystery of exemption upon my life I cannot be part of the tears of men lift your voice and pray it's for your glory pray for myself for my family Are you praying koinonia i will give you the treasures of darkness the hidden riches of secret places the treasures of darkness the hidden riches Pray, you're not wasting your time. I extend myself. Hallelujah. 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 Look at me. There are two instruments of exemption from scripture. Are we together? The first instrument of exemption is the blood. When the last plague was about to be revealed, he told them, he said, get a lamb. Cut that lamb. Drain the blood. Put it upon your lintel. Whether you have personal faith or not, that's not the issue. Once I see the blood, I pass by. Listen, it was a mystery. As far as the angel of death was concerned, he killed everybody. But when he got to some homes, they were already dead. And so he passed. There was no need killing them. The blood was a sign that someone had died for them. And so the angel passed. And everywhere he did not see it. Let me tell you, there is a mark upon the saints. Please hear me. This thing you call recession and suffering is a spirit. It has eyes. It knows where to go to. 
are we together i'd like you to pray and plead the blood for the purpose of exemption upon your life and your family lift up your voice and pray oh plead the blood the blood is a weapon of supernatural exemption from accident supernatural exemption from terrorism supernatural exemption from wickedness supernatural exemption from the assaults of darkness no 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 death no death it's still a glorious year multiplied grace influence by the power of the holy ghost Hallelujah. Are we praying? The second instrument of exemption is called favor. The second instrument of supernatural exemption is called favor. Are we together? Psalm 45 My altar is calling 44 sorry verse 3 quickly Psalm 44 When you read Psalm 44, verse 3, then we'll go to 41 from verse 9 to 11. Please take notes, media. 44, verse 3, then we'll go to 41 from verse 9 to 11. Read with me Psalm 44, verse 3. One to read. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand, thine arm, the light of thy countenance what was the mystery that made that happen because thou 41 from verse 9 to 11 please read it yea my own familiar friend in whom i trusted which did eat of my bread had lifted up his heel against me does that look like the times we live in betrayal of people next verse but thou, O oh God, be merciful unto me and raise me up that I may requite them. How will that happen? Next verse. Because my enemy. So every time your enemy wants to triumph, favor is not just for collecting things, it's an instrument for triumph. Lift your voice and say, Lord, let favor exempt me. Lift your voice and pray. The wickedness of men to destroy us, the betrayal of men to mock our God, including those close to us. They may be family members, but he says, Oh God, this is how I will know that you have favored me when my enemies do not triumph over me. hallelujah hallelujah don't be tired while praying don't be tired isaiah 54 please isaiah 54 we are reading the first three verses 
we want to challenge stagnation and barrenness of every kind it's time for you to move forward are we together want to read sing oh barren that did not bear it says break forth into singing and cry aloud thou that did not travail with child it says for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife said the lord verse 2 hallelujah enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation he says spare not enlarge lengthen thy court and lengthen thy stakes why verse 3 for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left and thy seed shall inherit the gentiles and make the desolate cities i'd like us to pray we are going to pray the prayer of Jabez. oh god enlarge my territory lift your voice and pray this dimension this level take me higher take me deeper my coast increase my influence enlarge my coast increase my influence Hallelujah. 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 There is a way men get preserved. The next half of the month is often the time that comes with catastrophe. People dying like chickens anyhow. Headache sending people to their grave. Let me show you two verses that will settle the issue of the fear divine preservation god is committed to his word isaiah 65 verse 18 read it with all your heart and then we'll go to verse 19 and read down to 24 or 23 are we together everybody read please verse 8 verse 8 did i say 18 i'm sorry verse 8 65 verse 8 go ahead read one to read as the new wine is found in the cluster and one say it destroy it not why for there is a blessing in it so will i do for my servant's sake that i may not destroy them all so as the destroyer is going around there are some people he says because there is a blessing he said destroy it not are we together go to verse 19 verse 19 same verse we are reading down to 23 i want you to receive it and believe it with all your heart rejoice in Joshua Selma and joy in my people and the voice of weeping shall no more be heard in her not the voice of what next verse there shall be no more then infant of days hold on premature death there shall be no more infant of days he says no an old man that has not what filled his days he says for a child will be how old it's in your bible for a child shall die a hundred years old but a sinner being a hundred years old shall be a cause 21 we're reading down to 23 and they shall build houses and inhabit them listen when the waste are come it makes you labor when it's time to enjoy something happens but he said they shall build houses and inhabit them they shall plant fine yards and then they shall eat of them 22 
for as the days of a tree are the days of my people and my elect shall long enjoy the works of their hands last verse You're going to pray and say, Lord, by the blessing, preserve me. The blessing upon my life preserves me supernaturally. Lift your voice and pray, preserving you from destruction. Destroy it not, for there is a blessing upon it. Destroy it not, for there is a blessing upon it. Destroy it not. Destroy it not. There is a blessing. Destroy it not. There is a blessing. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for Nigeria. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are not only spiritual people, we are agents of national transformation. Are we together? We are not irresponsible citizens in this nation. It's obvious that the leaders and the governments of nations are confused. They act bold, but we know they do not know what they are doing. And we are not surprised because the Bible said so. Are we together? But let me show you a scripture as we pray for Nigeria. It's a scripture that will bless you. Shibarakoto Supratia. Isaiah 62. We are going to read verse 6. And we are going to read verse 7. Then we will go to verse 1. 6 and 7. Go ahead and read. Want to read. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Nigeria, which shall never hold thy peace day or night. Keep not silent. God is saying, I want to move, but I have set up certain people whose voice must be heard before I move. He called them watchmen. They are upon the walls. And he says, do not keep quiet. He says, give him no rest. Ah, till he establish, till he makes Nigeria a place of the earth. Give him no rest. Make that petition. Make that petition. Verse 1. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Let's read verse 2 and 3. It's a prophecy about Nigeria. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name. The last verse. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of God and a royal diadem. Listen. We all know that there is a prophecy about Nigeria. I've taught it here in one of the messages. Are we together? Nigeria is not just a country. Nigeria is a holy land. Nigeria is to Africa what Jerusalem is to the world. Are we together? You can accurately use Nigeria as a spiritual map to gauge the happenings of God. Nigeria is the firstborn of God upon Africa. I've said it again and again. The name Nigeria is a mystery. It was not, it was not just an amalgamation uh, of the northern and southern protectorate by Lord Lugard. It was a mystery. Are we together? 
there's no room I would have shown you in Isaiah 18 the prophecy about Nigeria that speaks about the people the dark skinned people coming far from Ethiopia is a prophecy about what will begin to happen to Nigeria are we together now I have seen it many times in the visions of God that there will come an arising of men and women who will do great and mighty things for the kingdom are we together that's the reason why when you look at the map of Nigeria you will see a mystery there the letter Y is the name of God upon Nigeria is a coded language it's not River Niger and Benway listen it is a code like Julius Baga will build a building and put their mark he put his mark upon Nigeria water is one of the five elements of the supernatural through which God speaks to men and he used water to write his name and that confluence meets in a place called Lokota the word Jah is the ancient name Yah is God's own name it's not the name of a state it's God's prophecy about Nigeria lift your voice and say Lord it's time for the prophetic destiny of this nation to arise lift your voice and pray Nigeria, God's firstborn, Nigeria, the holy land, God's land, Nigeria, God's own nation, Nigeria, God's own nation. in every kingdom is the spiritual point of reference the throne room is the point of reference in heaven everything in heaven emanates from the throne room it is God's administrative center of activity are we together Washington DC is the administrative center Abuja is the administrative center prophetically speaking God has a prophetic center in Mount Zion the side of the north the city of the great king there is a location men can stand and prophesy from that point he says promotion comes not from the east or the west or the south he never mentioned the north the bible says he had compounds this mountain long enough he said turn ye northwards even in geography there is what they call true north there is a mystery to it we are standing here in the north prophetically speaking we have a territorial advantage listen I want you to take advantage I'm teaching you deep prophetic mysteries of intercession you don't just pray foolishly your soil is matching the north the earth is one of the elements of the supernatural there are five of them the first is the wind responsible for sound the second is fire the third is water the fourth is the earth the fifth is light every spiritual communication of God comes through these conduits and the earth is a universal point of contact we are standing in the north from this point he said from where thou art lift up your eyes I like us to prophesy to the borders of Nigeria we are standing upon the north the side of the north the city of the great king stretch your hands to the heavens speak to the gates we call our gates peace we command the spiritual borders of this nation to be secured secured from terrorism we command peace upon our walls, peace upon our gates. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll soon round up.
We are praying. I want us to pray for our families. Many of our family members are confused. No matter how much you succeed in life, if your family members don't catch along, they will draw you back. Are we together? Are we together? We are going to pray. There are many families suffering. You see a family of 10 people, only one breadwinner. It's a cause. Are we together? It's a cause. But we are going to pray. There are many families that are dead. Once upon a time they were rich. Once upon a time they were blessed. Once upon a time they were working. Now they were dead. In Ezekiel 37, it says, Son of man, can these bones live? They were an army. They were a family one time. But something happened and they died. They lost their structure. But he says, Son of man, if you want them to come to life, prophesy. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. The instrument we will use in our families right now is prophecy. I'd like you to prophetically call everything dead in your family. They can live again. Open your mouth and prophesy. Open your mouth and prophesy. I call every dead thing in my family. Come back to life. Come back to life. Every dead business. Come back to life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, look up, please. We're rounding up. We're coming back to ourselves now to pray. Please listen. I have taught us again and again. There is a law that governs greatness. Please hear me. There is a law that governs being relevant. As powerful as prayer is. The Bible says, the gift of a man room for him the gift of a man the price to come out of the realm of struggle is the price to ascend in value for as long as you are on the begging side you will remain a slave forever are we together for as long as you are in the begging side please hear me i don't want to fool you not everybody is feeling the heat in nigeria there are people whose value and gift is too great for them to feel any heat are we together there are people this is the best year so far for them no 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 I, i'm not saying by faith it literally is every day is christmas for them because their gift cannot but open doors listen the greatest gift a man can have is the anointing of the holy spirit you don't refrigerate it you don't have to wear suits for it to work it doesn't need battery it doesn't need voting oh come on a man who pays the price to carry the power of the holy ghost is a man who will never beg for bread a man who will never die in complex seek for a man who is discreet and wise that you may set him over the affairs of egypt and they checked around there was no man anointed enough except joseph and at once he became a prime minister are we together everybody needs the power the unction the anointing of the holy spirit with all due respect and with all humility and to the glory of god i will never beg till jesus comes it will never it's not no 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 it's not a prophecy i'm not prophesying i'm telling you what will never happen under the sun again 
even if one gallon of oil is 10,000, I will never beg again. You know why? Because for as long as there is one demon roaming around the earth, my life is still useful. You may not like me, but there is a treasure in earthen vessels. And every time you are buffeted by hell, you will need what I represent. Question. Who is ready to pay you for what you carry? If there is no man willing to pay you for what you carry, you will feel the heat of what is happening in this country. I don't want to deceive you. We cry because we think we are carrying degrees and so government should give us jobs. No, it doesn't work that way. Are we together? In any economy, listen, in any economy, private organizations are the ones responsible for employment. There is only so much the government can do and private enterprises are very few in nigeria and africa and they are at their state of infancy they do not have the capacity to employ labor and reduce unemployment waiting for government to help you is a mirage there is a mystery job said there is a path which no foul nowhere the webs of the lion has not gotten there there is something a man can carry that will make you useful men will pay you and call it a privilege Fill me up till I overflow. I want to know. Fill me up till I. upon my life that will force men to look for me lift your voice and pray bless an anointing oh god upon my life bless an ability come on pray an anointing that will cause gentiles to come to your life they are kings to the brightness of their life from heaven an ability that makes me an endangered species an unction from the throne room that will make men seek me pray 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 shakata prakata rekotos Hallelujah. 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 Mark chapter 1, verse 36 and 37. We are going to pray. You must be relevant. It takes a gift. It takes value to be relevant. There is what can make men look for you. You have been looking for men. Stop looking for men. Look for grace. Grow to become valuable. Are we ready? No, 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 not Proverbs 18:16. That's not what I said. Mark chapter 1, please. Mark 1, 36, 37. He said, and Simon and they that were with him did what? Followed after him. And this is what happened. Next verse. May that be your prophecy in Jesus' name. Go ahead and read it. One to read. And when they have found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. What is it that you must carry that will make men look for you? They will travel from Lagos and say, Pastor Alpha, you are the only one carrying what I need. Lift your voice and cry. Lord, every potential locked up in me, every gifting, every idea that will make men look for me to come with their treasures, to come with their bounties, every unction, every prophetic anointing, every healing anointing, every teaching grace, every entrepreneurial ability, every leadership.
leadership ability every intellectual prowess that will force men to look for me I cry for a release I cry for an activation I'm tired of looking for help I am tired of begging men oh God activate a grace upon my life Pray from your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're rounding up. We're going to sing this song, God's Ability. Sing it with all your heart and I want to prophesy upon you. Are we together? There is an unction that can come upon you can come upon your business, can come upon your academics, can come upon your life. You may be gifted, but is your gift anointed? It's one thing to be gifted, but it's another thing for that gift to have an anointing. When little brings much, it is anointed. When much brings much, it is scientific. When much brings little, it is demonic. But when little brings much, it has to be supernatural. Lift your hands, I want to speak over your life. God's ability. That's what you see lifting this ministry. Recession proof. Pain proof. Stress proof. By the unction of the spirit. Rising like an edifice. As though Satan does not exist. By a mystery. No gate of hell can unravel. God's ability is working in me. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you, but I want to speak some blessings upon you. It says, Early will I seek you to see your power and your glory in my life as I have seen in the sanctuary. It's one thing to see the hand of God in a sanctuary, help her please. And then it's another thing to see it in your life. It's one thing to see God move in Koinonia, but it's another thing to see it work in your life. I want to pray for you. No, no, something must land in your life. Please, I want you to believe this with all your heart. One of the gifts that God has given us in this ministry is the gift of helpers. We never raise a voice to cry without somebody answering. And it was a light God gave me. He said, you will call on man and a nation will answer. I want to pray for you. There is an unction that makes men come to your aid. In the name of Jesus, right now by the power of the Holy Ghost, in this night of prayer, I release that anointing all over the building, inside and outside. Receive that anointing right now. Receive that anointing right now. Receive that unction right now. The unction that draws help us. I tell you, fire is falling on people. The unction from heaven that calls help us to your life. Strange help us. Hallelujah. We are still praying. We are rounding up this prayer session. I want to pray for you. Brothers and sisters, if I tell you I do not know what the favor of God looks like, I will be lying to you. There is such a thing called the Esther anointing. God gave me this revelation in 2010 that there is an anointing called the Esther anointing. The Bible says Esther found favor on everyone who looked at her. It was like a cloth she was wearing. Once you look at them, the mantle comes upon you. You must favor them. Listen, there is such a grace. When men make contact for as long as their eyes can see you, something must force resources from them. I pray for you. In the name of the Lord God of heaven, by the mystery of favor, I see this falling on people. Receive the Esther anointing. Now, now, now. Receive the Esther anointing. Enough 
that is enough. I prophesy it inside, outside, everywhere, online. Receive the extra anointing. The extra anointing. Strange favor. Strange testimony. Strange favor. I prophesy it. Let it enter your spirit. I activate it. Let it work in your life. Strange favor. Strange favor. Strange favor. Strange favor. Strange favor. Strange favor. Listen. If you want to pay your way through life, you will die young. It's not about being rich. It's about being favored. It's not all about money. There are some things money cannot do. Are we together? Favor. We are going to pray for speed. Speed. It's a grace that makes men run and do so much in a short time. Listen. There is a cause of retrogression in many families and many lives. It's not that they are stagnated, but they are moving too slow. When a man buys his first car at 70 years, it's not a testimony. Are we together? When our parents at 65 are still looking for money to complete Lintel, it's a cost. Many parents are waiting for their children to build for them. But the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. I want to pray for you. There is such a thing as speed. There is such a thing as speed. Some of us are moving. God is helping us. But if you are to be sincere, your pace is slow. Financially, it's too slow. In every wise, ministerially, it's too slow. Entrepreneurially, it's too slow. It's too slow. Are we together? A woman can give birth. To give birth to three children in 20 years is not a testimony. Are we together? You take in five years after your marriage, first child. Seven years later, that's when you can take in again. Nine years later, that's when the third one comes. You are now using your pension to pay the secondary school fees of, of children. It's a cost. Are we together? The Lord must send speed to our lives. Some of us, the, the things you planned from January till now, not one. You have not ticked one. No, you need grace. There, there is a grace that accelerates men. Are we together? Let me share this with you with all humility. I went to check my list of the things that I was trusting God would do in my life. I found out that certain things that were leased for other years, God had gone ahead to start doing them. And I said, Lord, you are faithful. And the Lord said, if you trust me i can surprise you to the end of the year that's what god said and i believe it for us all we're praying we've been trusting god for a place of counseling you know because of the crowds that come and just last week a family i think they are represented here just came and met us and said they wanted to give us their whole church facility to be using for counseling at no charge that's the gift of men are we together There's a song in my heart, I'm not Yoruba. You know the song? Who knows the song? We need to sing that song. Do you know the song?
God, make arrangement for as many buses, even if they have to come back multiple times. Don't be afraid. We are going to make sure if it's possible to transport everybody, we send you. So don't be afraid of time. Praise the Lord. It's part of the wicked, stupid things that poverty does for people. God wants to bless you. You are thinking we cause that spirit in the name of Jesus. Focus and concentrate. We are blessed enough to take you home. Don't rob yourself of the miracle. I hear what I'm saying. I want to speak from the depth of my heart. You need speed. This prayer session is important. You need speed in your life. Some of us, you are too slow. Everything you do is like the spirit of a tortoise. You are limping when others are flying. The Bible says they that wait upon the Lord, they will renew their strength. He said they will mount up with wings as eagles, riding through the current. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. There is a grace that makes men catch up. Some of you is not even speed. What you need is restoration first before speed. Are we together? Hallelujah. Someone we used to know many years ago, we had the opportunity of seeing that person this year. And when we saw that person this year, it was an apology. It was horrible. He was looking like a thief after many years. Do you know it's a terrible thing for you to be growing older and nothing is growing with you? The only thing growing in your life is your age. It's a cause. Are we together? Don't say you are too young to be blessed. Don't allow the cause that came with your village where the first person to take his head out of the water did it at 40. And they say you are too young. Too young for what? You are not too young for trouble. Why should you be too, too young for blessings? When trouble comes, people say it's alright. But when blessings come, they say, well, how did this happen? I want to pray with, for you. Let a, a dimension of speed that will make men ask you, what are you using? I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. At the count of three, may that function for speed, honestly from my heart, let it fall on people. Lord, I'm praying at the count of three, release grace, oh God, move your people forward. One, two, three, take that grace now. Take that grace right now, help them. Speed, 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 shabarakata, speed, I command speed. Where you have been crawling, start running, start running, start running. Where you have been running, start flying, start flying by prophecy, start flying by prophecy, start flying, pursue, overtake, recover without fail. I prophesy to you, pursue, overtake. Pursue, overtake, pursue, overtake, recover. Thank you for lifting. 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 In two minutes, I'd like you to thank God. Expressions of deep gratitude. Lord, I thank you. Speak to him in your language. Expressions of deep gratitude. Thank you, Jesus. I have prayed it. My hands will handle it. I have prayed it. My hands will handle it. I have prayed it. My hands will handle it. Let the fire from your altar touch my body 
Let the fire from your altar touch my heart. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will be. Oh, speak from your heavens and the earth will be. My altar is called. I believe that one of the graces that will come upon us tonight is the grace for the secret place. Hallelujah. Psalms 139 verse 7 to 12 reveals to us that God is everywhere. It was the psalmist that began to help us understand that it is not possible for a man to hide from God. 139, when you read from verse 7 to 12, just write it for the purpose of the reference that God is everywhere. is called His only presence, the ability to be everywhere. Are we together? I said, where can I hide from your presence? It's a question. If I run there, you are here. If I go there, you are there. If I go there, even in the midst of darkness, you are there. So it's an established fact from scripture that God is everywhere. It's very comforting to know that. That God is everywhere. But then he does not meet with people everywhere. Understand this. God is everywhere in his sovereignty and only presence. But the place of encounter has always been Old Testament, New Testament and through eternity. God does not meet with people everywhere. In the dealings of God with men, location, atmosphere matters. Everywhere is not conducive for a meeting place with God. Just because this is a New Testament and Christ has died and all of that, the veil has been torn, does not mean everywhere is a conducive meeting place. Are we together? The concept of the secret place is one of the mysteries in scripture that is behind unusual manifestations of the life and the power of God upon a man. When you see any man, any woman, any pastor, any individual commanding unusual dimensions of the effulgence of the life, the power, the presence of God, then that individual is a person of the secret place. God is everywhere but he doesn't meet with people everywhere hallelujah when you want to have a business meeting with an individual you don't stand by the roadside to discuss destiny altering businesses is that true you find conducive places scattered across this nation 
probably this time right now are different important meetings happening is that true uh, for those of you who are familiar with world events uh, the historic meeting that is going to be happening between the north korean leader look the time and the extent of the preparation that is going in be because two world powers are going to be having a conversation that can decide the destinies of millions of people and so the atmosphere the location the commitment the hotels the hospitality the refreshment every detail is going in that's for men and then we want to meet with God and host his presence and then we believe that just because God loves us atmosphere and location does not matter are we together every house every home has several compartments that reflect the value of the people you want to meet is that true there are visitors who can come and you just stand by the gate and discuss with them not because you devalue them they they you they have not earned the right to have access to your living room or your bedroom there are a few people that you can grant access to enter the house there are others you can grant access to your bedroom dependent on the quality and the level of discussion god is a god of the secret place i told you everything that is mighty and noble in the kingdom is hidden the concept of God hiding himself is a concept that if we do not understand especially for um, especially for believers who are not very balanced this is the the imbalance that not knowing God properly creates because you will want to say how how does a God who loves people delight in hiding himself the Bible says that God hides himself in light and you will want that why i mean if god wants me to know him should he not be around chasing after me why make the pursuit so difficult and others even advocate that god is not hiding anywhere you have god once you have your bible you have god you see when people preach look at their proofs look at their results wisdom is justified by her children don't be gullible and just swallow everything just because people are well-meaning it is important that you vet their understanding by the proofs that they are what they believe they know is producing god hides himself is a system in the kingdom everything that is glorious is never revealed it is hidden it is your pursuit that makes it revealed it's a kingdom system it's not even just for god when you buy how many of you have bought an expensive gadget do they give you the phone just like that or no if you buy a phone or a television sometimes it's amazing how small the gadget is and then you see how big the um what they call it now whatever it is there's there's dunlop there there's another line there's another instruction written in german written in chinese written in english written in another language and all those details just for that little thing I've gotten a few gadgets in my life and I've been surprised at the rigor of opening them. Opening them alone, sometimes you have to rest and wonder what you caught this, you make sure you caught this. And why? Because of the value. Is that true? So God who is most valuable cannot just sit down and say just because I love you. No, when it has to do with redemption, God is not hiding himself. He reached down to people. But when it has to do with intimacy and our walk with God, God does not expose himself carelessly. He hides himself in light. It's true. Are we blessed? Hence the concept of the secret place. I think it was a school of ministry students or so i was i was telling was it yesterday or when was it and, and i was telling them that everything that is glorious hides hides it's called the mystery of the veil many people just believe that just because the veil has been torn the veil has many meanings the veil in the temple torn doesn't mean the concept and the idea of veiling things have disappeared everything that is glorious is covered are we together imagine if your heart was on your head do you know what your enemies would have done with it 
are we together just imagine that your heart was on your head where someone can hold it out of anger and squeeze it and kill you so god decided to hide it and covered it with ribs because of the vitality someone can slap your face and you feel bad and it doesn't kill you but someone holds your arm heart squeezes it and does whatever you will die and so in his wisdom because of the excellency of that organ he hid it imagine if women get pregnant on their head think what the enemies will do with acid on those babies growing are we together now and so god designed a system to make sure that the baby is hidden and safe while growing only revealed when the time is right so the the wisdom the the ideas about life help us to understand the principles of god that everything that is glorious is veiled if someone were to give you something and you check you don't see the coverings around it you will return it back in fact there are products that they say if you find out at the point of purchase that it is open return it back God is a God of the secret place. Psalm 91. That's our text for tonight from verse 1 and 2. Psalm 91 from verse 1 and 2. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. The first information that is revealed in this scripture is that it is possible to dwell. Remember the secret place is not the house of God. Are we together? You can come to the house of God and fellowship. You can be planted in terms of your consistency. But here the Bible is talking about something. Remember, he never said them. Them. It's not a corporate thing at all. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. The Bible says shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him will i trust the secret place is real the secret place is not necessarily a physical location although although a possibility exists that a man can create a location and dedicate it to be a meeting point with him and god but the, the idea of secret place does not necessarily mean a physical location. The secret place is a spiritual state. It's a posture that a man can take that allows him to access where God is. Very powerful. The Bible says whoever is in that secret place of the Most High, it says he shall dwell under the shadow. That means God is there. If it is the secret place, you will find God there. Listen, if it is the secret place, you will find only God there. There may be other beings around, but when it comes to the secret place, there are many things that happen upon Mount Zion, the house of God. Innumerable company of angels, the spirits of just men made perfect. But in the secret place is an affair between you and God. Not you and a prophet, not you and an apostle, not you and members, no. Not you and your wife, not you and your husband, you and God. This is an art that our generation of people, as serious as we are, we are losing it. We have prayer meetings, a lot of corporate gatherings, and as wonderful as they are, many people don't know God in spite of their prayer and fasting because there are dimensions of God that have to be uniquely revealed to you when you are alone with Him. There are things God will never tell you when you are in a corporate place. It's true. When you are alone, listen, the Bible talks about Jacob being alone. He was about to see his brother Esau and he was afraid not knowing what will happen. So he divided his possessions. The Bible said he sent his wives, he sent everybody. Say when he was alone, then a man came. He created an atmosphere that became a secret place and a man came and he wrestled with that man. He said, leave me for the day breaketh. He said, I will not let you go 
until you bless me and he said what is your name he said jacob he said thou shalt no more be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have power with god and you have prevailed and he touched his tie blessed him and the bible says the sun arose and he called that place peniel meaning the face of god because i have seen god face to face and my life has been spared if all of you is seen by everybody you will not be mighty in these end times there are dimensions of your life and dealing with god that is not even for public consumption there are things god tells you that is not for preaching they are his customized dealings that should serve as the foundations for your spiritual stability not everything you receive from the secret place is shareable there are things you receive from the secret place if you share it you will lead people into error because it was a unique communication that was peculiar to your level of alignment it is not healthy to share those things there are instructions that if god gives you and you obey if another person obeys that instruction it becomes the reason why he falls are we blessed the secret place the place of the dealing of god with men men are not made just in church alone men are made in the secret and when i talk of men i'm not just talking of men in ministry like pastoral ministry men are made in the secret place so the secret place is real it is a location spiritually that can also be reflected by a physical location remember i've taught it in this house the law of consistency come back if the law of consistency is is the scripture that the bible says whosoever you serve the slave of that person you will become thereof it's just paraphrasing that means that if um i go to pray you will be surprised that i can struggle with prayer because i'm really doing it in the flesh but it's not to be discouraged i will go back again and do it i will go back again the fourth fifth sixth time as i keep repeating that activity i am whatever spirit on earth is responsible for prayer which of course is the holy ghost but the dimension of his operation that supplies grace and the staying power in prayer is being attracted through my consistency you see that a day will come i will go for prayer and live back in the power of that spirit from that day you can't stop praying again are we together it's true even in your sleep you will be praying and wake up because they, you have become a slave to the influence of that spirit same thing with giving give you can frown and carry your seed and god gives you an instruction and you are angry and then because the grace for it has not been given but you continue in obedience your consistency is drawing to your life that grace is called the power to lay it down the grace that conquers greed a day will come when that grace overwhelms you at that point there is nothing you cannot give god including your life and like jesus you will say i have the power to lay it down there is nothing god can give you at that point he can give you everything because he knows you will release it so you can see two people and one can easily give he can carry his whole salary he can carry his life savings and another person will give 10 naira and come back and say are you aware that i gave 10 naira today see i used to give five naira before and even me i'm impressed with myself that person is operating just in the flesh of course god is, is a faithful and merciful god but when people are operating by the spirit how you know is that they are under the influence of that spirit it's not something mechanical again when the spirit of revelation comes upon you whether you are studying the bible before you preach or not it's only you that will know nobody walking with you will know that this guy has not read the bible for one month it's only you and god you will never use the 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 limitation of revelation because the spirit of revelation through your consistency of scripture has come upon you and rested upon you 
are we together and because that dimension of the spirit has rested upon you you will find out it is possible to close your bible for one year and yet you are teaching volumes of series it is only you and god that will know that you have not been opening your bible but you will be surprised that you are quoting scriptures you know nothing about you can open your bible on stage like this like i'm standing to preach and on stage when you are about to preach that's when your sermon comes in less than one second because the spirit of revelation is upon you you can literally get up to preach not knowing what to say and people think you have been preparing for 10 days one week for the conference and you finish that's why you see all these things are not necessarily measures of spiritual maturity because there is a grace follow me tonight though. are we together the secret place the tragedy with many believers is that they think they will know God by reading a book many believers think they will know God just by listening to a man talk about him all these things are stimulators but the Bible says the scriptures testify of me that means the scriptures should lead you to want to know a man the scriptures are a testimony you heard about koinonia for those of you coming for the first time you listen to a message and it propels something in you let me come to that place that's how it works when your experience just stops at reading the bible then you did not maximize the purpose the scripture must lead you to an encounter when i say things like this most people think i'm being arrogant but i have said it for many years that the way our generation is seeking God we will not find him that way we pride ourselves in finishing the Bible from cover to cover and we move around saying I know God I've read the Bible 30 times it's valuable I've done this and that I'm in every prayer meeting and you see a lot of spiritually ignorant people bragging around we believe that the knowledge of God is in the volume of spiritual activities no sir no sir you know a man by giving that man time time is a component in intimacy there is nobody that knows anything without committing time to it no sir we are used to fast everything fast food fast whatever you can walk to a restaurant now and while you are talking they are frying the egg for you they just turn it flip the burgers you have we carry that same attitude god you are king i'm educated i have an msc reveal yourself just in a nutshell god in a nutshell lord in a nutshell just let me know how the, your principles work no sir that's why we are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth do you know about finances yes i know do you know about the anointing i even know there are seven dimensions of the anointing go to isaiah 11 and we we do it like we are rapping and at the end the gates of hell are said i like these people continue priding yourself and then you find out that the emptiness there is no substance of the knowledge of god that's why our convictions dwindle you watch people who claim they love god let a little challenge test them and they will they will they will curse god to his face lord i thought you would give me the job i everything was all right they even called me to congratulate me lord were you not there when i was quoting the scripture and all of a sudden the employment list comes out and it's not there and you are crying for two weeks god you must appear and answer me and god says that is all you know about me Sir King Salama, Sir King Aljana, Ya Bole Say, Ya Bole Nakao, Sujana Ne Nakao, Sir King Salama, Sir King Aljana.
to know God for yourself. The, listen, this corporate knowledge of God will not stand the test of time. The days that are coming will require, the Bible says, for the people that do know their God, that do know their God, they are the ones who will be strong and will do exploits. There are things I know about God I will die believing. The rate at which believers vacillate convictions is a proof that we have not encountered God. It's amazing how someone can believe something today and walk in that conviction, write books about it and two weeks later he's not sure again. You can't mentor a generation like that. Unbendable conviction based on something you have seen. A man of God that is into great deliverance um, was confronted by another man and said, Look, you are always doing this thing. The people said, Stop misleading these people. And he looked at him. He said, Why are you talking like this? He said, Go and find out about my educational qualification and everything I had. For me to leave all of that and be doing what I'm doing, you should know that it's not just that I read a book, there is an encounter. What I've seen is too real. I'm just pitying you because very soon you will need me. That's what the man told him. He said, you are under attack. That's why you are talking. My knowledge has shown me that whoever talks like you is under attack. ago in this nation i'm not one who comments on things that happen on social media but i understand there was a debate that had to do with tithing shame on the church shame on us times infinity for being so confused because a man who didn't have any rights just got up and wrote a proposition is proof that we have not been doing it by faith is proof that it's not a derivative of a dimension of god we've had that means someone can get up today and say hey, Jimmy, loving your wife is sin and all of a sudden he looks at this woman and says i know you gave me two children walk out of my house why because a man said loving your wife is bad we become slaves to the ideas of people just because they are bold in communicating the idea does not mean they are right our generation is an arrogant generation in the height of our failure we are still bragging you need to know God to survive the pride of this generation you will meet somebody who will tell you I'm in business I don't tithe I don't give I'm a millionaire keep watching when he finishes deceiving you he will crash and repent and start tithing while you are suffering from his teaching many people today who have advocated error have repented quietly and they are doing what they once misled people into but many other people are there suffering are we blessed we need to know god for ourselves we need to know god for ourselves this generic knowledge of god that's why for many of us every little thing you are looking for someone there's nothing wrong with someone agreeing with you but i mean something touches your head um please Jimmy, are you awake venga are you awake promise are you awake uh, pastor alpha who can i call why, why will you know god for yourself then you now text the people back and say pray then they say okay i'm praying didn't you know is that a news not know God for yourself then let me tell you when God begins to expose some of us you know the privilege that God has given me to meet people sometimes I sit down and I hear them talk I can't believe a man can be this arrogant in error just because there's small money or small results around you hear people talking being sarcastic or men of god and you look at that person and you know i can look at a man and know what spiritual law you are breaking and know what consequence is waiting for you even while you are bragging ah, i 
insulted a man of God. I did this and that and I went in peace. Look at the foolish man that is talking. The Bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake. The person is laughing. Ten years later, you will see the man at a railway station just standing with his shoes. This is what happened. That prophecy kept trailing him like a policeman trailing a thief. And he thought just because he was free for two, three years, the word of God will stay till it judges everything. The secret place. I'm going to share with you six things. Six dimensions that we access through the power of the secret place. And I want you to be very sensitive. This has helped me in my life. Number one, the secret place is the place of brokenness. Brokenness. Write it down. Isaiah 51 17. Isaiah 55 55 6 to 7 Isaiah 55 it says seek ye the Lord 6 to 7 while he may be found that's a very dangerous scripture why will the Bible say while he may be found this is not talking of salvation no this is not born again there are dimensions in god that require timing it, it it will take let me tell you a man who begins to seek god at 80 years you will find god but there are dimensions the remaining lifetime you have will not afford you to grow and transit and metamorphose spiritually to access certain dimensions of god he says seek him early while he may be found call ye upon him while he is near seven he says let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to God for he will abundantly pardon brokenness let me tell you this brokenness um, is not necessarily for sinners pride has almost killed men of God in our generation this holier than thou mentality whenever i talk about brokenness like this there are people who just say it doesn't let's get to power part listen brokenness is a state of the heart that declares your consistent dependence on god the bible says a broken and a contrite spirit god will not despise do you know why many of us although we feel qualified we never find god because we believe that standing in our self-righteousness based on what we believe we have and know god should anoint me brokenness brokenness show me a man that can be broken towards god i show you a man who the devil will never have access to him look at david Moses was a man who walked with God very faithfully. The Bible says he was the meekest man on earth. Yet, Moses could not enter the promised land. Do you know that? Just because God told him to speak to the rock and out of anger that was justified, he took a staff and hit the rock. God said, that's it, you are not going. He joined all the other people who could not make the promised land. But here is David. Search me, O God. Let me tell you the posture of those that God will use in this generation. Search me, O oh God, and try my heart. He says, if there is any wicked way in me, you don't have to manifest it yet. It can be there, waiting until you have an estate. Nobody knows that one day you can insult a woman the age of your mother. You are not yet rich. So you will think that just because I'm an obedient young man, who would have known that David one day will kill Uriah and sleep with Bathsheba? 
put a man's death sentence and say go and die a nice shepherd boy please i'd like you to pray in one minute and say lord i open my heart such is brokenness it's a language that our generation hates but let me tell you it is the secret the number one proof that you are a man of the secret place is that consistently it is not sin that destroys men it is the pride of an unbroken heart before god it is not weakness and limitation that destroys men it is the pride of an unbroken heart Nebuchadnezzar was brought to his knees until he was broken. Pharaoh was brought to his knees until he was broken. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm not ashamed that whatever you find in my heart, but I come to you just as I am. Let there be a brokenness. Sir King Aljan.24 he said and see if there be any wicked way and lead me to the way everlasting that's a man before god that's that's the posture that can bring the presence of god attract the presence of god to a man every time we stand before god believing lord why are you using this man there are people who see certain of our orthodox pastors and they stand as young people full of themselves and say this this reverend this man he doesn't even speak english well why is god using him why is the man rising whereas i am here i'm a fasting giant i have this knowledge i have that i have this and yet the ministry does not grow do you know why because that man is not sound in the world and he knows it so he goes to god and say lord if you depend on my teaching these members will not grow i come to you with my limited revelation can your grace speak for me and god says the little prayer you pray for the members i will amplify it because it's coming from a broken heart let me tell you pride kills when you see people arrogant for a long time they have left the secret place i can know whether you are one who is of the secret place by the consistency of self-glorification and pride if up to one month in your life passes without you seeing a need to spend time with god alone it's a sign your life is under attack hear me if you're a man of god here listen twice don't be carried away by some of this little accolades in ministry oh they invited me here i went to this country a senator met with me he said you are the greatest man of god in the world while they are saying that keep your ears to the throne lord what are you saying in the midst of that club god can say finish that meeting and let's meet where we usually meet you will enter there and god will never talk to you about a senator god will say i'm already seen there is i i want to bless you with 100 million but there's there's something i'm seeing that 100 million would destroy you and say god me i just a senator i would have prophesied to god say keep quiet oh, i am god brokenness many of you stop growing spiritually for a long time you didn't backslide but you didn't grow either because you are doing a lot of corporate things retreat 
retreat now is, is a language many people don't even know what a retreat is they think retreat is fasting so they just close their door and fast and answer calls all through from morning till night gone are the days when people love themselves and say sorry you are not going to see me for the next two days please hear me god is speaking to us if you don't practice retreats you will not survive the darkness of today it's true no matter who you are retreats retreat retreat is not when you gas out spiritually and you see that kai no grace is working in your life no you must find time i'm busy i'm busy is a trap of the devil no if police arrest you now you are not too busy to attend to the people if an armed robber detains you somewhere you will say i'm robber i'm busy come the day i'm free the power of brokenness have you come to a position where the secret place has broken you read you off your pride and everything you know there is no brokenness by how we speak uh, the other day someone just called me and is that i don't want to talk too much but uh, at my level now you know then we now wrap it up with a religious all glory to god it's a lie it's a lie all glory to god first comes from the heart before the mouth hallelujah is god speaking to us now some of us need to find time just by this message god is telling you i love you but you have you have worshipped me corporately but that fellowship we used to have something is wrong return to it oh return to it return to it that fellowship is not there again even when you didn't have money for hotel you were having time for god now that you can pay for any hotel or any place to stay with god you are no longer spending time we only run to god when there's trouble then we just run and say god have come again is it not you you are god i'm a man but let's not know lord i come to you i stand before you and I know that it is by your mercy and by your grace. Lord, I thank you. David, a man after, not God's money. You can be after God's money. You can be after God's anointing. You can be after God's fame. But a man after God's heart. Please, I'd like us to write it if you are writing. I return to the place of brokenness. Genuine brokenness. It will show in our conversations when we are broken you always acknowledge that i am what i am by the grace of god there are arrogant statements especially from we men of god that are testaments of our absenting ourselves from the secret place number two please take it down the secret place is the place where we find the mercy of god ah. in recent times i have caught a revelation of god's mercy in a way and a manner i wish i knew this 10 15 years ago not that i don't know about the mercy of god but the idea many people have about the mercy of god is the reason why they never at all access his mercy do you know that the mercy of god is one of the major keys that many people are looking for in this life not even favor mercy first our idea about mercy is that mercy is for sinners so we pride ourselves that i'm not a sinner i don't need mercy lord what i need is revelation <clears throat> The place of mercy psalm 86 verse 5 we'll read a few scriptures quickly psalm 86 verse 5 we find mercy in the secret place for thou o lord art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy to who not to all believers please help me plenteous in mercy unto them that sin unto them that fast unto them that call upon you if you call upon him he knows you are calling upon his mercy the mercy of god 
the mercy of God you call upon the mercy of God and see him move beyond your faith level call upon the mercy of God and see him move beyond everything in your life when you invoke the mercy of God he moves because of his his son Jesus Christ it has nothing to do with you again it has everything to do with there are people who are prosperous even though there's still a cause in their life that cause has not been broken but they are still prosperous because their language all the way is messy as the arrows that fly by day is coming they have no knowledge of spiritual intelligence but mercy please help that lady the mercy of god oh, 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 oh. Lamentations 3 and 22. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not what? Consumed. Consumed. Because his compassions fail not. That means even when I didn't know the spiritual laws that would have kept me, I still saw results that were not accounted to my knowledge spiritually and later now that i know that this is the law responsible for this result i'm wondering why i was getting the result anyway because by the time i started getting the result i was not yet obeying that spiritual law i didn't understand the mystery of exemption i didn't understand the mystery of praise yet the rewards of exemption were following me and the bible tells me the secret that it is because in your ignorance you were able to provoke the mercy of God if God were to wait for us to obey every single spiritual law allocated for our victory some of us would taste victory when we are 97 years because our rate of assimilation compared to our need for the results is very low so he introduces his mercy I know you are you are you based on the way I deal with people if you if you don't tithe consistently but something has happened in your life and I noticed for four months you have not been tithing ordinarily based on the terms of justice you should not receive this reward coming but you were wise enough immediately you called my mercy he overrides the four months not tithing and then he doesn't justify you but he gives you this to show that I am God he said because his compassion fail not do you know what his compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of your infirmity he is aware that you are a man ha! so when god gives sam an instruction and says sam remove your suit and sew it and then for some reason sam is struggling maybe because when he grew up he was taking care of all his family members and the little time now he's been able to do something for himself god is now saying to show god knows it's not easy because he has gone through pains and so when he disobeys god god doesn't say you disobey me i will judge you compassion makes him to examine the condition and say no if i were sam what would i have done no i i shift beyond i i'm not justifying this but Sam, I have been touched with the feelings of your limitation. I still qualify you. This is God. Oh, oh.
before I ever understood the spiritual principles that control that result. Not many men of God will tell you what I'm telling you. Most people will make it look like all their result is a direct reflection of their total obedience. It's a lie. No. How many of you, men of God, have gone to preach and you were too tired to pray you just lay down open your eyes and it was time for the vigil there are times that i'm so tired i leave koinonia here and before i get home it's past one i have to leave five o'clock to catch the flight i'm there there is a delay i'm arriving and all kinds of things and the meeting is already on and sometimes all i do is just lie down on my bed and i say lord i know this part of you it is your mercy that i need in this meeting and all of a sudden that anointing comes again i know that the angel of his presence is with me within that room not because i i honestly took out the time to pray i will be lying to tell you i prayed eight nine hours for every sermon for the results you get it's not true there are times that all i did it was in the plane i was sleeping i didn't even know until we landed and got up dragged myself like that went to dress and there i'm going in the meeting and everybody has been fasting for two weeks apostle is coming and you who is preaching you have not fasted you are tired is you stagger yourself on stage but suddenly ah, mercy, 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 mercy. i know what this thing is so Psalm 25, verse 6 to 7. While I was studying this, I stumbled across that scripture and it blessed me in no small way. He said, remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Next verse. He said, remember not the sins of my youth. He said, no, my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake. Listen, there are many of us that if you pray this prayer, many parents today are suffering the consequences of the sins of their youth. They did something when they were young and it followed them forever, forever. And their children's children, they are not exactly under a curse. It's just the rod of judgment that is upon them. He said, remember remember not the sins of my youth there are people here before you knew god before you knew anything about god you even came from an abused family so there was no hope of knowing anything about god you almost shredded your life into pieces it was even when you came to university you got born again but there is a backload of a lot of spiritual laws that have been intertwined together remember not oh god the sins of my youth nor my now listen there is a difference between sin and transgression let's assume you lived a very nice life what of transgression violations of ordinances whether through ignorance or disobedience lord remember not that in 1995 i should be tight in i was criticizing men of god in 20 in 2000 i should be filled with the holy spirit and i said god forbid i blasphemed against the holy spirit remember not my transgression he said according to thy mercy not according to thy wisdom according to thy mercy remember thou me for thy goodness sake ah. these are mysteries in the bible that's why some people will keep getting angry with a lot of people you will see a woman the woman is not so wise she's not so intelligent she's not so learned she has been a widow since the children were five years but you see help coming from everywhere mama what is the secret you say all i know is one song one song of mercy that i sing all the time 
and then another arrogant person i went to yale i went to this i went to that in fact don't worry i know that they will elect me it's just that i'm being patient until this guy becomes president the guy becomes president for eight years and goes you are nothing for you if you can learn to provoke god's mercy when blind Bartimeo, jesus was passing jericho for the last time he didn't say jesus i am obedient to i've been listening to your message jesus would have said they're not obedient enough you only judge disobedience when your obedience is complete not around he said thou son of david have mercy hold on was jesus the son of david no the son of david was solomon so you will say you are calling Solomon. No, don't call me. Solomon will come and help you. But he knew something. Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And then he turned. He said, what do I do? He said that I will receive my sight. The mercy of God. Many of us come from families whose parents were wicked to others. And if God is to feed, no matter how innocent you are, the wickedness that some of our loved ones, some of our loved ones had jobs, they stop young people from rising. They are carrying on their head the woes and the pain of bleeding people. Forget that they repented later on. It will take the mercy of God to advocate for them. Jesus appeared to me I will be lying if I was I, I always seek the Lord but at that time I was not on any special fasting program I was not on any special word program I, I'm not sure I was even studying my Bible just lying down quietly and then he came what brought him mercy people ask me today I want to see Jesus I tell them I don't know how I don't know how to help you see Jesus I know how to help you love God but to see Jesus the equation even me I don't understand the food I just know some variables nobody knows all the equation what do you add plus what equal to seeing Jesus you add it and see whether he will visit you this night because you can sit down here crying for an encounter and Jesus will leave you and go under the bridge in Kaduna and wait for someone by 1 a.m. who is busy insulting a stupid man of God there comes Jesus he says I am Jesus and you are saying with oh, I'm, I'm here fasting Jesus this is not fair I thought you say you reward those who diligently seek you because in the midst of that he's ranting compassion is interpreting what he's saying he's not really insulting God he's saying I'm a confused young man looking for help God hears the voice of your mouth but he hears the voice of your heart that's why you can be saying stupid things and God is answering something else because while your mouth is saying something your heart is saying something years ago I was speaking to one guy who I don't know there's the guy smokes all kinds of things and I sat down I was remember him remember that gentleman Jimmy very funny guy he was under I think he was under the bridge in Kwangila Kwangila bridge this guy came to be part of us and within less than two weeks he started entering dimensions of encounter with Jesus there's somebody that was a I mean you look at his life as if there is nothing but in the midst of that what his heart was saying is lord i need you whereas you physically your mouth is saying lord i need you but your heart is saying lord i'm fine by myself god does not just listen to your mouth your heart too has a voice that's why he said try my heart oh lord give me money and your heart is saying lord i'm on a revenge mission i need to prove to people i'm not a failure and god says your heart and your mouth is conflicting but someone else can say i will never tithe and what the heart is saying is lord i'm frustrated if this thing is real reveal to me number three the secret place is the place where we find rest and comfort rest 
and comfort oh how you need this in this troubled world let me give you an advance notice everyone you know has the potential of disappointing you everyone i think it's a revelation you need to note today everyone born by a woman born again or not has the potential to disappoint you disappoint you in business disappoint you in ministry disappoint you in marriage disappoint you in every regard when people say a pastor disappointed me i thought he would make me a deacon i've been there for him he didn't make me a deacon i i thought i thought i'm not the last but what are you saying that's a man for you but there is a place that god provided where the weary can find rest and comfort where a man of god listen to this i was sharing with a dear friend today on phone in the afternoon and he was so weary and tired spiritually and i was a distant friend somewhere and i was just advising him i say you see this work that we do bar we look busy but our lives are very lonely you need to know how to find comfort in god otherwise if you can't find comfort in God you will start finding comfort in movies you will start finding comfort somewhere you will now I'm not saying it's wrong one day you go to football viewing center where someone that's behind you will go and kill you there have you learned to find rest and comfort in God that's why some of us get into the mistake because of the obsession to share your problem with someone the pain overwhelms you you don't choose who whoever is there for you emotionally at that time you run your mouth and tell people intricate details about your life about your family when you are done with the gist you don't know what to do with yourself again because you have messed up your entire life they used to respect your father and your mother until one day you open your mouth and told the people wrongly do you know that i'm not the first child of my father i i it's a long story uh my my father pregnanted one zimbabwean woman 10 years before i came and the person you are telling is not even mature spiritually it's just that your heart was looking for the secret place and because you didn't have it you had to search for someone be careful this is particularly for ladies because ladies you are designed to be expressive you always want to be heard be careful you would destroy a lot of good things in your life there are people who sat down in restaurants talking about the contract that their husbands got and the person sitting at the other side of the table was an arm robber the guy had finished eating but he refused to stand up and go because she was sharing her <laughs> this faithful oh sorry i'm meeting you for the first time am i talking too much and then instead of the friend to say yes they said no 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 i'm okay then you continue talking the God is faithful to us. We, I, we, I, he even said he's buying a jeep for me. As I'm talking to you now, there's twenty thousand dollars on our bed. Eh? The way the bed is, it's a six by eight, seven, and under. You know that kind of bed. While you are talking, the armed robber is nodding. I say, in fact, I didn't even tell you where we live. Do you know that we moved recently? You know that that one white house, and in the night, that man is just there and comes with accuracy and looks for you and say remember you were describing your house for me lie down and it shoots and kills everybody don't allow your mouth destroy your destiny are we together there are men of god who carry their church problems out of pressure and took it to politicians instead of taking it to god sir just to let you know forget all this one that we laugh on tv oh. the truth is that the bills that are on our head we need 200 million by friday and the senator said oh really ah uh -uh. um and you always look sharp like this <laughs> that's how we do it is the industry and all of a sudden one day you go somewhere and say, all of you lift up your hands and the senator is in a beer parlor watching you as they look at these idiots the other day i was with this man and he was begging me for 200 million because only god should have heard that you left him in search for what only his secret place can give you are we learning something tonight hmm. the secret place is a place of rest and comfort psalm 27 please media help us first psalm 27 from verse 13 to 14 we'll read four serious scripture psalm 27 verse 13 to 14 he said i had fainted unless i had believed to see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living 14 
wait on the lord hallelujah be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart wait i say on the lord no matter who you are in life because of disappointed expectations because of our goals and our dreams not happening when and how we want it to be there are times that you can be weary as a man of god you trust god for increase in membership you are pouring your heart do you know one of the most heartbreaking thing for any man of god is to truly pour your heart to members and people and not see them growing at the rate that matches your sacrifice except you are not an honest man of god it will pain you sometimes when i get text messages from people i truly tears fill my eyes i just can't because it's painful the time it takes to prepare just one sermon you see that and then all of a sudden very unwise decisions that come from those things and your heart just bleeds are we together at that time you will be tempted to call a friend call somebody or whatever confident now you must learn to wait on the lord lord i bring before you these church bills lord i love you but the bills in my family are almost killing me the bills in my church almost killing me lord i come to you because nobody can understand me nobody understands me they all think i'm a wicked woman but lord you know my heart i come to you and the lord says find rest this is where you can be understood it is powerful to be understood unfortunately life does not give you that kind of opportunity with men it's difficult for men to understand you but there is one there is a place brothers and sisters that you can go where you know God understands you hallelujah wait thou upon the Lord Psalms 91 and verse 4 to 5 then we look at 62 and verse 1 to 5 if God is God speaking to you tonight psalm 91 and verse 4 he said he shall cover thee look at this come he gives you a picture of a hen or an eagle is that true you know how eagles protect their young ones they spread their feather and cover them while they are under they just cover them in other words let let me see let me see the the animal let me see the 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 predator in the wilderness that will come near you i know you are fragile in yourself but i cover you he said he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust then his truth shall be your shield and buckler have you experienced that dimension of god that people can be insulting you many of us have not risen to places you know for some of us who god has granted grace in ministry small it's painful to pour your heart there are times that you can do everything you are doing and all of a sudden someone may be listening to a colonial message and say all these pastors all they are looking for is your money i don't trust any pastor in nigeria they are all stupid people they all use your money it's all church money you see all of them dressing is all your money they are using when you hear that kind of thing no matter how you are sometimes as a human being it can touch your heart because you know you are sincere but there's no one to explain to and god doesn't even allow you to explain anything to anybody at such times his presence and he says my son i'm the only person on earth you owe explanation and if i've credited you it doesn't matter who and what they think comfort and rest someone looked at me and said apostle how do you get motivated you are always happy i said you think so if i if what is on my head comes upon you you will collapse physically immediately not after a few weeks immediately 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 success is a burden it's a burden you should pray to be prepared before you pray it comes to you are we together yes success i think it was last year i went to buy suya in the night i was just playing a song and someone just knocked the door of my vehicle i just went down and then i i looked at the lady and she was jumping I said, ah, 
apostle you buy swear i mean that's my life what 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 sort of embarrassment is that that that's the burden of being successful what what is what is wrong with swear is swear tobacco just that i stroll in the night to just make myself happy you see when you become great everything about your life is everybody's business and it can be a burden it can be a burden sometimes people will call you in the night and you say you are sleeping say i'm surprised you are sleeping look at that kind of stupid text you see that and it can make you feel guilty sometimes you will think it will enter you but sometimes you feel guilty because truly that time you may have planned to pray it's just that sleep took over you the people make you feel bad and you stand up saying because of this i must go for three days dry to prove there's there's nothing to prove my brother go to the secret place and find rest and find comfort many of us don't know how to find rest in god we don't know how to find comfort in god that's why we find comfort in things that's why we find comfort in people you find comfort in a friend that disappoints you you move to another one that disappoints you then you go to a pastor that disappoints you then you go to a film that disappoints you then you go to a drink that disappoints you then you go to a club that disappoints you then you say i hate life like solomon you now say vanity upon vanity all is have learned to find comfort in his presence i remember one time when the crowds were increasing here i was concerned about the rain and i said lord what do we do what do we do there are several people coming you know several people and they will keep coming what do we do that time sometimes because the venue may not be available uh, the alternatives we used to use then were very inconvenient i had to go to god look at moses do you know what happens when you are a leader people expect you to have answer to everything even what they don't have answer for they are very okay with themselves they pity and excuse themselves but they look at you and say you should have an answer for this they looked at moses and say moses you don't know also if you don't find a way of parting this red sea we are taking it gently now we will butcher you here make salt from the gold we took from egypt and kill you here and and put your monument and moses said just take it easy wise man he ran to the presence of god lord what do i do i need i need comfort these people are wearing me and he says stand still he said take your rod go and tell the people to move forward learn to draw strength in his presence learn to retreat when people look at you and do all kinds of things you have neighbors that are nagging and troublesome you have people in your office who are always misunderstanding what you are doing you have people who will bribe and cheat and live their lives anyhow and you have made up your mind that there's no bribing there's no cheating if it's 10 naira for the organization i'm returning it and they look at you and say holy holy stupid person are we all not chopping somehow in nigeria even that company said is it not with bribe they started this company and they try to make you feel guilty at that point my soul wait thou upon the lord wait thou upon the lord psalm 62 verse 1 to 5 quickly if we're unable to finish we'll continue next week psalm some of you this message you don't need it now just keep rising the time will come you will need this message daily you will search for this message and sit down and weep while you hear right now you are not sowing any seed but people are giving you their harvest so you think it's your faith that is working a time will come you will be exposed to the high sun the reality of working these kingdom principles then it will down on you you know sometimes you go for meetings and when a man of god is preaching you see pastors crying standing up and you'll be wondering why are they like this because they they are closest to that reality when they say bills that is not captured in your mind because someone else is awake while you are sleeping the time will come when you will be awake when you should be awake and that's when you will find out that someone can have a bed but not have sleep the situations in your life will wake you up say are you joking you want to sleep when we are here verse one to five truly my soul waited upon god he said from him 
cometh my salvation next verse to five he only is my rock and my salvation he is my defense ah, i shall not be greatly moved verse three how long will ye imagine mischief against a man talking to enemies now ye shall be slain all of you as a bowing wall shall ye be and as a tottering fence for they only consult to cast him down from his excellency he says they delight in lies they bless with their mouth but they curse inwardly this is a picture of the tragedy of greatness that when people become great this is what happens to them men can say well done you are a man of God but in their heart they say we pray that one day you will have an accident to prove that this faith is nothing the Bible says to bring him down from his excellency then he says my soul wait down only upon God he said for my expectation is from him are you blessed tonight you must learn to wait on him for comfort instead of running around and harassing people listen every time situations overwhelm you keep quiet go to the secret place play a song like this or play worship I think media watch a worship team you people should do these kinds of things you just have 30 minutes of strong instrumentation like this for people to soak in because there are times you can't sing I wish I can tell you is every time you can dance dance where is the energy from I, there's a lady she may be in koinonia here they are burying her mother on um, today's Sunday I think on Tuesday or Wednesday this lady's mother died like 10 days ago she calls me almost 10 times every day crying and say apostle I believe my mother can come back to life that my mother said she will live long my mother was a God-fearing woman you know how difficult it is for a man of God especially when you walk in the anointing to respond to people like that and after praying and fasting when they came to carry the mother's body i think from shika or so to travel with her she kept crying and telling them that they, they should leave her her mother will come no i say small girl we know you are this that lady can get into prostitution immediately because of anger and say god failed me and then someone will run his big mouth and say something at that point what that lady needs is the secret place there is no amount of counseling you bring that will touch that lady are we together it's true. what happens when a man of god and his wife is unable to have a child what happens when a man of god who is anointed gets married and then they find out he's impotent what happens when a man of god's family is in shambles he labors and gives birth to children he's pouring his heart to bless the world and all the children daughters getting pregnant sons are into drugs it's difficult for that man to stand and preach because he has to continue to be a preacher of righteousness but someone says don't bless us with this your faith thing if you know god why is it that your daughter why is it that your son has not been able to do anything brothers and sisters there are times that life can push you that even the strongest of us will need to lean to something other than you at that point find rest oh my soul find rest find rest in his presence it's true there are times that the leaders send me text messages sir we need to make a decision now this is what we need to do this is what we have to do this is what we have to do sometimes i think it was in the school of ministry or so um a few days or last week i was told that while lectures was going on someone's bike was stolen or so very funny incidents now when you hear such kinds of things as a man of god it can touch you have you learned to rest in god i have learned to draw strength in his presence we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you number four the secret place is a place of revival and restoration write it down 
the secret place is a place of revival and restoration psalm 23 from verse 2 and 3 please restoration of fire restoration of hunger restoration of love for god restoration of values restoration of your physical energy psalm 23 from verse 2 he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters verse 3 he restores my soul he restores my soul he restores my soul there are times you need restoration you need restoration of fire you need restoration of grace psalm 143 verse 11 psalm 143 verse 11 a place of revival quicken me O lord for thy name's sake for thy righteousness sake bring my soul out of trouble mm. the prayers that great men pray quicken my soul lord revive me revive me my the situations in my life i can feel life going out of me physically revive me revive me oh god revive me i need a reviver lord the ministry burden is overwhelming me i can't pray again i can't fast again there is a conference coming and lord the finances is not there the energy is not there just when i want to prepare my son is causing trouble just when i want to love god one of the sons that i've so labored and raised is now disappointed revive me lord i feel life going out of me you need revival revive my fire lord i used to be a prayer warrior i used to pray for two hours three hours all of a sudden as soon as i graduated now it's three years after graduation lord i'm surprised no visions again no fire no nothing i'm surprised i misquote scriptures i cannot even no i used to wake up 2 a.m every day 12 o'clock every day now in two weeks i've not even called on your name revive me the secret place it's a place where men cry they come to him and say lord revive me revive me hmm. revelation chapter 2 4 to 5 Revelation chapter 2 this was the Lord speaking to the seven churches he said nevertheless I have somewhat against you what do I have against you he said because thou has left thy first love this is a word from the Lord to many of us here not thou has stopped loving me thou has left your first love I like many of us to just be sensitive to what the spirit is doing i already sense the anointing but there are many of us the way you started with god is not the way you are going now it's impossible for a whole day that you will not open your bible you will not read but right now you don't even know where the bible is that's the truth you love god you are born again but the fire has gone you may even be a preacher there's no week that you will not fast at least one day but right now six months gluttony has eaten up your fire quench the fire on the coals that the lord would need to pick those tongues of fire again from the throne and touch your heart and touch your hand and touch your lips return to your first love return to your first love return to your first love god is speaking to us return to your first fire return to your first appetite for spiritual things you used to buy at least a book every month right now it's more than two years the only books you have are the ones that are left here you are not interested again you have all kinds of devotionals you have all kinds of things There are many believers that need to return to their first love. Is God speaking to us tonight? 
return to your first love and you return by going back to the secret place do you know sometimes what God does for me is that I can sit down like this quietly and he begins to play before me the visions of my yesterday yesteryears all of a sudden I see myself in the night when I used to pray I see myself studying I see those things and they bring a fresh energy fresh energy to me many of us have lost visions no vision you dream you sleep for eight hours you don't see anything tied to your destiny something is wrong Yahweh Yahweh revealed to men the secret place is where you find the secret of your destiny you will never find it in a book you may read it in a book but the secret place is where the blueprints the mysteries of your destiny are unveiled to you Yahweh, Yahweh. in destiny there is no you don't know what else to do because the secret place is where the blueprint the strategy for your destiny is revealed listen that it worked for brother a does not mean it will work for you you must go to the secret place lord what is my destiny about open this thing what is the key to my anointing i know i'm anointed but how do i open it why do i stand in a meeting and not see your power flow sometimes it happens i'm not sure i try to copy this man of god i try to do this what is the key what is the key what is the key how do i know this anointing is in a place how do i know what you want chapter 2 we are reading from verse 14 to 22 then we'll jump to verse 28 a king sleeps in the night and has a strange dream and the king is angry if no one can tell me the dream and the interpretation I will kill everybody and here comes Daniel Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok the captain of the king's guard which was gone for to slay the wise men of Babylon people were about to die because there was no strategy next verse 16 we're reading to 22 then daniel went in listen and desired of the king that he would give him what time it's not that it cannot be found give me time it looks like my life is not making progress it's like there is no way out i don't conclude on me yet give me 
somebody prophesied to someone and said give me time it looks like i'm confused i've been going around in circles and nothing is happening give me it looks like god called me but the anointing is not yet speaking he said give me time something is about to be revealed in the altar of fellowship that will bring fire on my life i see it in dreams but it doesn't happen in my meetings i've seen prosperity but what is the secret he says that he would give him time and that he would show guarantee if you give me time i will prove you wrong you called me a failure give me time i will prove you wrong you called me barren give me time i will prove you wrong you called me a failure my father called me a failure give me time i will prove you wrong listen don't let no arrogant person look at your life today and conclude on you anytime anybody talks nonsense don't argue give me time i said i was called into the ministry of wealth and abundance and he said with this 200 naira shoe he said don't worry just give me time something will be shown me in the secret place i will do business with god in the secret place that will shut people down let me tell you this for those who have been here in this ministry for a long time i said this thing many years ago yes, sir. you see that i said this thing many years ago that's why the name started eternity network international right from when from a, a cave somewhere with a bag because i saw it i knew that the time will come it will be a privilege for kings and presidents to hold your hand give me time it doesn't look like it give me time between now and then a mystery will be revealed brothers and sisters when you see a man rising by a technology you don't understand he used time to buy mysteries in the spirit time is currency we can use it and do business with god and receive the mysteries of our destiny in exchange 17 then daniel went to where he went to his house just like everyone went to their own house and made the king the thing known to ananiah and so on and so forth 18 that they would desire what mercies of the god of heaven you now see our mystery again concerning what is a secret wealth is a secret lord why is this thing not working in our family it's a secret this anointing as open as you see there is more to it than what your eyes see there are secrets there are secrets to life is the one you carry that will help you command life there are secrets to favor it says and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men in babylon 19 hallelujah 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 then the secret was revealed to joshua selman in a night vision he says and daniel blessed the god of heaven listen there are people here what you are doing is true you are called but you will not get there the way you are approaching it your call is genuine but there is no secret nothing has been given to you god gave me the secret of not the general church code the church code for koinonia it's a secret it's a secret it's not charms that is bringing people it's a secret it's a mystery we trade mysteries in the kingdom you will look at it like this and not see where the equation adds up but you ask the devil find out the devil that will stop people from coming it's a mystery whatever mystery brings you somewhere keeps you there it's a mystery then the secret was revealed to daniel in a night vision daniel blessed the god of heaven we are reading to 22 then daniel answered and said listen blessed be the name of god forever and ever for wisdom and might are his and he changed the times and the seasons he removed kings and set up kings he giveth wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them who know understanding 22 he revealed the deep and secret things he knoweth what it is in darkness and the light dwelleth with him 28 verse 28 i thank thee 
praise thee, O God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known to me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made unto us the king's matter. A matter that does not concern you, but by the mystery of the secret place, God gives you something. Great men are fathers of faith in this nation. They will tell you they found secrets. When they started, people said, don't mind them, it's five years. Now they are going as if the devil doesn't exist. I passed redemption camp a number of times. And I am amazed at how people leave Lagos around and come to this forest. I've been to Canaan land Otter. I've been to almost almost all the prayer grounds from MFM to to living faith to to redeemed to four square is amazing almost all of them can be holding programs concurrently simultaneously and it's all packed full to the outside same mysteries listen when you hold the mysteries of the kingdom I pity whoever just thinks you are joking it's not pride you will play life like a chess But there is a God in heaven that revealed what? Please, I want to comfort you concerning your business, concerning your career. There is a God oh, in heaven, and the Bible says He has the ability to reveal secrets. My life is full of this kind of experiences where God comes to me and says, This is it. I give you a blueprint, I give you a secret. And make known unto the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head are these. And he began to tell him. Revelation. Let's take one last verse and we're done for today. Jesus. Psalm 25 verse 4 to 5. Psalm 25 verse 4 to 5 and then we'll pray very touching scripture let's read it one to read four to five it says show me thy ways O lord teach me thy paths next verse lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the god of my salvation because i'm aware you can do this what do i do on thee do i wait how long say retreat all day not part of the day all day because i want you to teach me something i want you to guide me so i wait all day not half day there are retreats that are half day two hours a proper full retreat is a complete day from the rising of the sun to the going down you are in his presence lord i stay i know you will come six hours he has not come you are still worshiping sitting like a madman eight hours you've not had anything it's just general scriptures of comfort i will leave you where you will go you just be patient nine hours is still there and all of a sudden late into the night you are sitting like a madman and say what am i doing here then he comes in his majesty when he comes you know he's there all of a sudden the climate changes his majesty is coming to your room he says what have you been asking me about this is for your destiny come let me show you and he takes you in the spirit of the lord opens a bible you have been reading every day but this time he's the one who opens it this is your destiny this is it this is what to do about your finances when you do this they will attack you here do this one do this these are the keys go and he leaves you get up from that vision and say where are the devils they come like before but you rise by a mystery and they say what lifted you the secrets of the lord we don't do business in this kingdom by bold face you will die like a chicken the mysteries of the kingdom ah. listen there's there's a woman now is i'm just waiting i i trust that they will finish i think i sent you the text a miracle happened just between yesterday and today a doctor i, I don't know if it's shika here he was trained in abu someone died this morning um now we don't talk a lot about all these kinds of things they were in the surgical room with the lady operating for what i don't know 
and then I don't know what happened and the person just died like that he was trained in ABU here but I think it's another hospital and they were all confused because the lady said according to the doctor he said they I sent you the text and a number of people here that they begged the lady said please make sure I come alive and the lady just died like that just died and the doctor sent me a text I think it was around maybe afternoon and said this is the situation and the family members are sitting somewhere just waiting for the report and he said honestly apostle you have to help us this is a difficult situation this girl has died they checked after a long time I said are you a doctor I replied him back are you a doctor he said yes I'm certified I'm not he said he was doing the surgery with um, some other senior colleagues I said Tor what do you want now he said apostle we can't tell this family this lady has died and I said okay the anointing of the spirit just came upon me in a very strange way and then I sent a text it's still in my phone I sent a text I said in the name of Jesus I called back your life I said they should take the phone and place it on the person and then the doctor foolishly just did it like that help her please immediately he placed that phone after a few minutes all of a sudden from the gates of death this girl just jumped back the text is killing me Yahweh, Yahweh. in life is a function of these realities accessed by the power of the secret place if the devil robs you from the reality of the secret place he has used one blow to destroy many aspects of your life there are many of us right now we are we are at a crossroad listen when you go to the secret place you don't come out till you come out with answers many of us go to the secret place. we are not desperate enough god does not visit casual people diligently seek him that you go back with answers and sit there and say lord do you know i read the story of buddha buddha was a young indian who was confused about life and why some things could not answer it doesn't mean i believe in him that's not what i'm saying but i'm saying buddha got angry carried notebooks and went to the secret place and said he's not coming out again until whoever is the deity of the universe explained to him the mystery of life he went there and whoever he met there and had an encounter changed his name to buddha he left there as an ordinary person he came out as buddha this is in the negative there is a way you can enter the secret place as a failure and say lord it is me and you i don't know what you are going to do but lord my recharge card and your god is in this room i'm not going out for your information i brought one gallon of your gods and one gallon of juice and one bag of pure water my bathroom is there i'm not going out there must be an answer to my finances get relevant notebooks you will stay for let me give you a side effect you will stay for a long time and not hear anything but if you have the guts to insist when he tests your resolve and see that you mean it like jacob he will come he will come he will come ask occultists the freemasons one of the things they do when they are initiating people and all of that is to hit your forehead with an object that is very painful that you can faint test your resolve do you want it that bad and they test your resolve 
when you are taking a student to NDA, sometimes from the gate, as you the mother just lets the student enter, from the gate, someone can just kick him and say, oh yeah, frog jump. You are watching your child do frog jump and say, mommy, I want to go back. And then they say, don't mind him. And after five years, that, that weak, chicken-like guy can go to a fuel station and harass a thief and say, sit down first. They don't talk and say, I will beat you here. You see my belt, I'm a military man. Something happened to him. Sometimes we pity ourselves too much to get the answers we are looking for. We are not desperate enough to stay. We want cheap power, cheap prosperity, cheap lifting, cheap influence. No, it doesn't work that way. There is a price. Are you ready to pray? Lord, grace to pay the price. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Hey. There is a prize for the anointing. There is a prize for revelation. There is a prize for direction. There is a prize for greatness. The prize is the secret place. The same power. There is a prize for a flourishing ministry. There is a prize for a thriving business. Pray, Lord, I receive grace, whatever it would take, in the name of Jesus, grace to stay. Lift your voice and pray, Koinonia. He that dwells in the secret place, the secret place, not the public place. Hey! You are beautiful in all your ways. more than a desire to succeed plant it in my heart and let it grow that you become my desire Hallelujah. Father, 
open up the secrets of my destiny there is something my eyes need to see so that my generation can see me open up oh god let the book be open lift your voice and pray pray this prayer point with all your heart what is the secret to your anointing upon my life what is the secret to the spirit of revelation upon my ministry what is the secret that you are giving me for wealth and abundance what is the secret for influence what is the secret for favor let the secrets of the kingdom be unveiled to me secret prayer listen we are still going to pray it again I had Bishop Oyedepo say this many times that people reign in life not based on the secrets available on the one God has shown them the Lord told me something I think it was two years ago you know we always teach that the word of the Lord is powerful yes but not every word of God blesses you it is the one sent to you sent there were many widows in Zarephath but a prophet was sent to one if Elijah met another widow it would be disobedience although he would give her breakthrough sent sent the word for prosperity can come for everybody but you must say send me mine send me mine it's a formula that will be added to you that will work for only you let me tell you there is an equation in every man's success equation that was customized for him you first start with the general understanding it's like occult you will be rising with it but you get to a level where god says no the principles have taken you let me now show you your own it's true it works for finances it works for ministry i was preaching somewhere and a man of god told me something he said he said pastor um we spend so much money on publicity is it all right if we stop because i hear you don't use i said don't stop oh the general principle is that the word must be published but how it will be published is a secret god gave me i'm not saying posters are bad that's not what i'm saying but i'm just saying it was you copy it you will run your church down sir don't do it there are things god can tell you god can tell you every time enemies rise against you fast for one day and that's all it's a secret to you it may look like a stupid secret but you will stand and see your landlord vowing that if by tomorrow Kai, oh you see eh, brothers and sisters when you hold these things your life almost becomes magical it's true look at jesus he had a secret they took him to a cliff all that was left is to push him and he walked through them hi There were times he parted the water but for jesus he walked on it if you were waiting for the water to part in jesus time that strategy was not it was of god but not relevant for that occasion he walked on the water and he told peter now we don't just part the water we walk on it there was something about the body of knowledge revealed to the people then that could only allow god give them miracles by passing through water but now he said you can walk on it angel appeared to me and he told me that there shall be no loss an angel why are you confident like this paul an angel appeared to me already it's not because i'm not human i've seen something and they were taken safely to an island called melita there is something you see people can be ranting up and down oh don't worry my dear that's why sometimes when people send me text messages apostle i saw an attack on your life they may be right 
but sometimes I just laugh it over. Boy, this man standing before you is surrounded by mysteries like chariots. There is what you must do. The moment they tell you, oh, somebody is about to attack your life and destiny, do you know what to do? Is there a formula God gave you that you get up and say, Lord, this is it. And you manipulate life from the secret place and come out to your shock. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph and makes through our life the savour of the knowledge of the glory of God. What you know in life, listen, matters. We're rounding up. In this kingdom, who doesn't like you is no problem, but who likes you matters. Who doesn't like you is not a problem, but who likes you matters. There are many people who are praying that God should clear them out of the way. They can't be cleared. They are standing there by a covenant that even God respects. They have become gate to a system. The way you pass through is to tell God to touch their heart to like you. Praying that they get up is a foolish thing. Are we together? You may have a vice chancellor or a head of department or a dean. He may not be very born again, but that man sows a seed to a dangerous man of God who has already spoken and said no one will fight you. So you will fight that man and the word of king will fight you back. And you are wondering why is this guy so unbelieving yet immune? Because a word is over him. And if God gives you intelligence, he says, look, this man on his own can die in one day from your prayer. But he was wise enough to find an anointing that shields him. Because of that, what you need to pray is favor. And you say, Lord, grant me favor. And the man says, I don't know why I just like you. Come. There are people you don't cast away. You pray that God will touch their heart for your sake. Not everything is castable. You couldn't cast Caesar away. You could just pray that God will make a man touch him to release the body of Jesus. Are we blessed? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for your people. My duty is to expose your people by your inspiration to the mysteries of the kingdom both that which you have granted to work in my life and that which is accessible in this kingdom lord i pray that much more than the hearing of the ear may the word be sent to the destinies of your people in the name of jesus christ i pray for you right now that an unusual grace for the secret place an unusual grace for retreats an unusual grace to spend time alone with god let it be released to your life let there be a restoration of your first love for god a restoration of your passion for prayer revival in your life if you once walked in any dimension of grace and the anointing and for some reason it has gone down i pray for you that from tonight let the ambers let the let let the coals of the spiritual fire within your life be set back a place in the name of jesus and i'm praying this prayer for you this prayer of secrets lord we dedicate this week from now till the next koinonia meeting on friday lord let men beginning from tonight may they see and hear strange things about their destiny for many of you i declare strange angelic encounters they will come to your room they will come on your bed they will come to your ears some of you will continue koinonia in your dreams. God will use my face to speak mysteries to you. Answer puzzles in your life. Business mysteries be unveiled. Leadership mysteries be unveiled. Ministerial mysteries be unveiled. The secret to the new dimension of relevance be released to you. The secret to dislodge the powers that fight your family may they be revealed to you in dreams and visions. Stand.
by the privilege of this election of grace i stretch my hands from the north to the south barash kadia i'm telling you i'm just in fire this is what i'm seeing at the count of three the unction required for the next season of your life in the name of jesus help them please at the count of three like fire from heaven it will come upon you one two three take that grace now take that help them please my god take that grace now take that grace in the name of jesus christ take that grace now help that woman please take that grace now superior anointings man of god woman of god i call for the apostolic i call for the prophetic i call for the evangelistic receive that grace take that unction in the name of jesus christ pray for those in business that grace of an entrepreneur the grace that can subdue systems and structures and give you visibility may that anointing rest upon you now may that anointing rest upon you now of a man acceleration is a possibility in this kingdom therefore I stretch my hands may that man to rest upon you now speed in destiny speed in your life help that woman please speed in your life I want to pray for you There is an anointing for influence and visibility. You can do all you can and your generation will not know you are there. But there is an unction that can come upon you and cause your voice to be heard. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. And for those who are following and connecting by faith. For some of you, this anointing, you will literally feel something physically coming on you as I'm praying. In the name of Abata Sakataba, Great Teskatebata, the grace for visibility. Right now, right now, may that unction come upon you. May that unction come back, Katoskatia, Embrek Katoskatiba Basia. May that grace come upon you. Let me pray for everyone here. Who is part of this spiritual family and you are into politics and governance the grace that enthrones in the name of jesus the son of the living god may that unction rest upon you right now marvelously rest upon you right now hear me when it has to do with wealth and abundance there are principles of productivity, value, exchange, increase, relationships, negotiations, and all these are valid financial principles. But there is a prophetic dimension to wealth. There is wealth that comes from heaven. He said by this time, tomorrow, I want to pray for you. Because for many people and many families, this is the area of engracing. Things have been tied in your life. I want you to believe it. Don't let the devil tell you that there is no prophetic dimension to wealth. And by a prophet, the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. I pray for you. Everyone who is in Egypt financially, hear the word of the Lord. I prophesy to you, come out now. 
Come out now! Come out now! The eyes that has refused to see you and favor you, I open that eyes to see you. The hand that has refused to serve a katapa, shaleka te breteketa, e breketoskia. Whoever is responsible for partnership with the Holy Ghost for your rising by reason of this unction, I declare your rising is confirmed now. Hallelujah. Hear me. There are many of us who desire to walk in signs and wonders, genuine miracles, not fake stage managed miracles, genuine healings, genuine deliverance, genuine signs and wonders. Some of you are here, you are men of God. Some of you, you are here into missions, but it looks like there is no result. Some of you are even pastors and in all honesty, you do not have consistent, predictable, ever increasing results. By the privilege of the election of grace, I stretch my hands towards you and I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, step into the realm of the miraculous now. The final impartation and we're done. See, believe me when I tell you honor and favor are real no matter how sincere you are no matter what level of character and integrity you have if you do not have the grace for honor and the grace for favor you will not go far believe me when I tell you this I want to pray that grace upon your life it was a grace I pursued with hunger in my heart and when it came I knew it had come take over take over I have come to the end of my sin. take over Jehovah I have touched something is happening in this place Hallelujah, hallelujah, I am up to the end of my soul. There is an anointing called the Esther anointing. It was in 2010, 2009, 2010, God opened my eyes to this mystery of the Esther anointing. The grace that can pick you from Shushan and put you to sit in the palace I stretch my hands right now may that mantle for honor and favor that came upon Adasa may that grace rest upon you now take that grace now take that grace now the grace that enthroned her man will not stop you in the name of Jesus Christ From today everything that represents shame an embargo of shame and disappointment over your life I tear it like a veil in the name of Jesus Christ hear me for some of you I prophesy to you between now and Sunday I stand by the God of heaven and I decree and declare every day of this week will open you up to a new chapter of strange manifestation hear me by reason of this grace you carry there are battles you will not need to fight the jealousy of God will arise and fight it for you where your father could not cross where your mother could not cross hear me what limited your father 
what limited your mother what limited those who had gone ahead of you i stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic i scatter it before you right now i scatter it before you right now in the name of jesus christ Everybody who has forgotten you because there were demonic manipulations that took you away from their memory they promised they will be there and help you but as it is right now you will pass them and it's as if they are not seeing you go back with this unction this night and watch the wonder walking power of Jesus your hands to Jesus and give him praise wave it to the King of Kings wave it to Jesus the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords something has come upon your life you are waving your hands and you are allowing the anointing rest oh hallelujah we give you praise our lives will never be the same never be the same it will be proof that you are a people God has helped and God has blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.